Just working with our company, you're going to get to work with a lot of bright individuals. Everyone is open and, and ready to, to help you and definitely big on advocating for making sure that you succeed and, and reach your potential. Everyone's goal is the same, to make the best products that we can for our clients and, and make sure that it is everything and more that it could be. What's kept me here? Our culture, we're genuinely a very great group of people. Everyone is just always willing to lend a hand. When I have a suggestion or a concern and I voice it, leadership actually hears me. As a consultancy, every person has a role and has something to bring to the table. There's just a lot of opportunities here if you're up for the challenge. Jump on board, be part of the fun ride, because we're going places. Can't get to a computer? Then we've got you covered. Just go to the Indiana SRN app and stay up to date with all of your favorite teams. You can watch live coverage or relive the experience with our on-demand service. You're good at making big announcements. We're good at your insurance. Start with Indiana Farm Bureau Insurance, online, over the phone, or in person, and stop knocking on wood. From warehousing to transportation and everything in between, Piper Logistics does it all. Centrally located, Piper Logistics has two warehouses in Indianapolis and a warehouse in Cincinnati, Ohio. Piper Logistics houses over one million square feet. Along with our transportation department, we can provide service to half the United States markets. Aspen Creek Grill, we are a from scratch concept with comfort fresh food. You can expect a, a world-class experience on, on a great budget. We've got incredible specials, great service. Today's dish that we're gonna highlight is going to be our Aspen Blue Sirloin. It is again our premium Black Angus certified beef and we top that with the blue cheese crust. Again, everything that we do here is made from scratch and it's no different from our steaks. We hand cut all our steaks in house. So our team back there, uh, is, it's just an incredible team. Everything that they do, they take so much pride in. They put a little bit of themselves into everything that they do over here, especially since it is a made from scratch concept. We want everybody to come visit us, enjoy some great food with some great service. Bring your friends, bring your family, come have some great food, have a great time with us with some of the best comfort scratch food. Thinking about what to do after high school? Consider a career with Boilermakers Local 374. As a Boilermaker apprentice, you'll earn while you learn. We offer excellent wages and benefits, and as part of our no-cost hands-on apprenticeship program, you'll learn from the best in state-of-the-art training centers and on the job. Become a union Boilermaker and get on your way to a great career. Find out more, visit www.local374.org or call 219-845-1000.
Bertner Electric Incorporated provides professional commercial electrical contractor services to Indianapolis and surrounding communities. Locally owned and operated for over 30 years, our knowledge and experience make us the perfect choice for all your commercial electrical contractor needs. Contact us today. Thanks to you. We've got your back. Just go to www.indianasrn.org and tune in to all of the live action or go to our on-demand service and relive your favorite moments. fans welcome back to game time to pure spirits to pure sports welcome back to high school sports fans i'm ihsa commissioner paul knighty and i just want to say welcome back this is game time this is indiana high school sports this is your ihsaa Hey, Indiana, let's clear the air about vaping, glue, rat poison, paint. We all know these products contain poisons like formaldehyde, arsenic, and lead. And these are just a few of the chemicals you'll find in e-cigarette vapor. Let's clear the air, Indiana. Don't puff this stuff. Visit don'tpuffthisstuff.com to join the fight and spread the word. Calling officials cheaters or corrupt, it's not a game. Insulting referees, it's not a game. Threatening officials, it's not a game. Berating young umpires, learning the ropes, it's not a game. Violent language in the stands, it's not a game. Verbal abuse from the sideline, it's not a game. Screaming at a referee in the parking lot, it's not a game.
Welcome into the campus of Manchester University on a beautiful Saturday afternoon for football in North Central Indiana. Tony Donahue alongside Peyton Brown with you for this ACAC contest. The ACAC.TV powered by Indiana SRN bringing you the Manchester Spartans taking on the Defiance Yellow Jackets on senior afternoon from Manchester University. We have some changes to talk to you about when it comes to the roster for Manchester. But let's thank some of our sponsors before we dive into it. We want to thank the Morales Group, building better futures one story at a time. Aspen Creek Grill, why go anywhere else for delicious food? Burtner Electric provides quality electrical services in central Indiana. Boilermaker 374 were second to none in quality and performance. Clean Slate, inspired innovation that moves business forward. Piper Logistics, from warehousing to transportation and everything in between, we do it all. And the Drumstick Dash, move your feet so others can eat. 9 a.m., two-and-a-half mile run around Broad Ripple in support of Wheeler Mission. It is senior day for Manchester, a team that comes into this contest 0-7 on the season. And Peyton, as you know, as a, as a former player, week in and week out, things can change. You have a quarterback coming in. Eric James will start today. The normal starting quarterback for Manchester is out. That is Trevor O'Brien with a concussion. But the senior going to get a start this afternoon on senior day. Yeah, I think he's going to really, really enjoy that. And maybe it's just the type of energy uh, uh, shift that this team needs, being 0-7, like you said, in this uh, season and coming uh, to towards the end of it with senior night, with a senior leader as quarterback coming in to set the tone for the offense. Maybe they'll be able to strike first uh, with this new quarterback here. Uh, in this offense. Put your coaching hat on for me for a minute. Put yourself in the locker room. You're 0-7. Uh, how much are you shaking things up, seeing what works? And obviously maybe it does start with an injury to your starting quarterback bringing in uh, the senior and Eric James. But, but how much can you switch up during a week? Because, you know, from week one you start getting into some rhythms and into a different type of offense. Is it easy to switch that up knowing that, hey, it's not working? Or is it hard to change kind of what you've been taught all throughout the summer? At this point in the season, uh, losing this many games, I think anything is on the table mm -hmm. for them. I think uh, they'd be willing, and me as a coach, I'd be willing to switch anything and everything up. Something I would stick to, though, for them is their running game because they've ran for almost 1,800 yards this year. So they've been able to find a little bit of traction with that. Uh, and, and seeing previous games this year as well, they've been able to uh, set up the outside run with going uh, inside to start the game. So maybe setting the tone with that and then mixing it up with a, a, a something like a flea flicker or a reverse or something special like this. Because at this point in the season, what are you going to lose? Mm -hmm. uh, and as a coach, I'd be throwing all the tricks out there, all yep. the guns blazing type of plays and just really letting these seniors have fun and go out with a bang. Yeah, and kind of playing loose yeah. kind of tends to maybe give your sideline a little bit more hype. Um, how important is it, though, to maybe – you always talk about in a game like this where you're an underdog, so to speak, uh, stealing a possession, maybe, like you said, going for something, maybe being more aggressive, putting all the chips on the table. Um, how important is it to maybe steal a possession, come up with some turnover, especially here early on a Saturday afternoon? It would be huge for them, and I think just like you said, playing loose, if they can really just uh, let loose and uh, not think too much in this game, I think that'll create the turnovers, that'll create the big plays, because oftentimes when players play tense, that's when they make mistakes. But if they play loose knowing that they have nothing to lose at this point, uh, I think they'll be able to come up with an interception, a fumble, uh, something huge, something unexpected because they are the underdog in this game, so they might as well just wear that chip on their shoulder and really build off of it. You mentioned that running game, the junior 5'10", 200-pound Sheridan native Cameron Hovey, one of those players that can get it done on the ground. As on the defensive side of the football, Jalen Grimes, the sophomore out of Florida. He was part of the D3Football.com all national team this week so manchester getting some accolades there here on their senior afternoon as we continue with senior this with, with senior afternoon accolades and recognition for the squad let's switch things over to the yellow jackets of defiance college this is the football team coming in at three and four on the year two and two in hc ac play they won last week at anderson 36 to 6 back-to-back -back contests on the road again three and four on the season averaging 25 points per contest but you look at some of these numbers Peyton uh, total yards 354 but 
pretty similar from the passing and the rushing game. They get it done on the ground, averaging 200 yards per game while throwing in 159 yards per contest and a turnover margin of minus six. But you look at that number rushing-wise, 200 yards. It's going to be important for Manchester's defense to get off the field. Yes, it's going to be very important. It's going to come in uh, their scheming, if they're blitzing, if they're switching it up, if they're doing twists on the uh, defensive line. Because, like you said, uh, uh, Defiance's run game has been dominant, and it's exactly why they've been able to beat opponents like Hanover, uh, somebody who's really competitive, and have uh, – uh, blowout games like they did with Anderson it's because they're able to set the tone but it is vital for Manchester like we've already mentioned to play loose to have fun with it and to get off the field because um, as they've seen this season uh, the more their defense is on the field the worse off uh, they have been let's take a look at the HCAC football standings heading into today's contest Mount St. Joseph 6-1 and 4-0 and oh. In the conference, they sit atop alone. Rose Holman is second, 4-0 in the conference with 5-2 overall. Franklin at 3-1. Defines 2-2 at 500 in the conference play, as is Hanover. Bluffton, Anderson, and Manchester, the bottom three. As we talked about earlier in the outset of this one, 3-4 defiance on the season. Uh, they won, as mentioned last week with a victory over Anderson, 36-6. to This is a team that has gone on the road and been competitive. They are 3-1 and one away from their home field. It's always good to have a good team that shows up on the road. Yeah, it's very important, and it's a little interesting that they have a better record away than at home, but uh, if you can win on the road, then that just sets up uh, every other outcome for you. Um, so that's another thing that they're probably using as momentum coming into this game. They have all the confidence they need. Uh, when they're on the road. So they're on the road again this week uh, uh, looking to um, make it 4-1. and one. Let's look at the stats, uh, some of the, the records here in this awesome series between Manchester and Defiance. The all-time series right now belonging to Defiance at 31-26. and 26. The first meeting, you got to go all the way back to 1926. And Manchester holds a 6-4 and four record over the last 10 Dating back to last year, it was Defiance College with a 24-21 victory on November 5th of 2022. These rivals know each other well. This one, you know, you look at the records, throw them out in the rivalry game, especially on senior night, could come down to the wire. It could come down to the wire. And uh, uh, maybe keeping in the back of their minds, Manchester, how close it was last year and having uh, the winning side of the record over the last 10 meetings could be another source of momentum that they're going to use here today because, you know, when you're 0-7 coming into a game, sometimes you don't have the confidence. But like we said, they loosen up, and they also maybe have the confidence in their mind uh, that they've been able to beat this team before and keep it close. Um, so maybe they're able to uh, push aside the stats that they that, uh, Defiance has had, and they're able to just zone in on what they want to do here today, which is come out with a victory on senior, night, senior day. Yeah, you touched on uh, the rushing attack. For Defiance, the Yellow Jackets led by senior running back Tyshawn Freeman. He's recorded multi-touchdown games in four games so far this season. He's ranked third in the HCAC with 669 rushing yards and second with eight rushing scores. The, de the defense for Manchester is going to have to have a spy all afternoon on number zero Tyshawn Freeman. Yeah, they are going to. I would stick the middle linebacker on him, quite honestly. I'd have that Mike linebacker go where he goes, and it doesn't matter what gap he goes through. If he goes outside, inside, I would literally have him uh, uh, just beeline towards him every single play. And uh, it's what we used to do with key players. You had the key players um, that you scouted all week and knowing that they're a threat, and then we would take one guy. He wouldn't really listen to the call that the defense of coordinator even put in. He would just go straight to that guy. He'd go through the line uh, uh, and just mirror him the whole time, and that's exactly what I would do with somebody like Tyshawn Freeman. Yeah, we look at some of the uh, wide receivers for Manchester. Uh, Kenneth Red Jr., 26 catches for 290 yards. He's got a touchdown. Uh, Jalen George, a couple catches as well. Duro Moss couple catches as well but you know with the senior quarterback coming in we don't know who his maybe safety blanket is going to be these these defiance yellow jacket secondary they're gonna to have to be on their toes because they don't have much film on what they will see with Eric james under center they will have to be on their uh, on their toes and it'll be interesting to see it'll be kind of fun to watch uh this new quarterback coming in because who knows if uh, uh, he throws better, he runs better. Uh, it's l literally everything is out on the table. And not only uh, would I say the DBs need to be on their toes, I'd say the entire defense need to be on their toes. We will go to the anthem and come back after this, get you set up for the kickoff. You're watching 
College football on a beautiful Saturday afternoon. HCAC.TV, powered by Indian SRN. Hey, folks, good to be with you for tonight's game. My name is Andy Simpson, and I'm a licensed IHSAA football official. And welcome to Friday Night Football, powered by Indiana SRN. On behalf of the 340 football officials, the IHSAA, the crew here at Indiana SRN, we hope you enjoyed tonight's game. And more important, don't forget to subscribe to the Indiana SRN YouTube page. As you're watching tonight's contest, I'm going to show you a few of our signals that will help you better understand the information we are trying to convey. Touchdown. Safety. First down. Holding or illegal use of hands. Encroachment. More offsides commonly known. False start or illegal formation on the offense. Or a free kick scrimmage violation. Face mask. Intentional grounding, roughing the passer, clipping, illegal shift, illegal motion, illegal block, pass interference by the offense or the defense, delay of game, and the one signal we dislike and you as fans don't like seeing, unsporting. We'd like to thank everyone for tuning in tonight and following us on SRN. You can also tune in to the Football Weekly Show and Coaches Show every Saturday morning at 8 a.m. on IndianaSRN.org. Finally, if you've ever thought about becoming a IHSA www.ihsaa.org and click on the Officials tab or call the IHSA office at 317-846-6601. Now, sit back and enjoy the game. Peyton Brown, Tony Donahue with you here on Senior Afternoon for the Manchester Spartans. They welcome in the Defiance Yellow Jackets, a rivalry dating back to 1926. We welcome you in to this presentation of the HCAC.TV, powered by Indiana SRN. All right, put your, put your helmet back on. Take me back to some of your senior days. Uh, what is that emotion like heading in? Your family's going to be there. Uh, everybody's watching you. Your last home game on your home turf. What are those emotions? And how do you bottle up those emotions when that opening kick goes deep? Yeah, it's, it's a surreal moment for sure because it's uh, emotions built up over the entire season because especially in college, you know this is it. There is no uh, uh, games after this unless you're good enough to go to the NFL, obviously, but – on senior night itself, it's so important to take those emotions and put it into the game uh, uh, in a m more of a responsible way because it can get out of hand real quick uh, if you realize that it's that it's it for you and knowing your family's in the stands, knowing your uh, friends are there as well. But being able to channel that into a competitive energy, I think, will be vital for them uh, uh, to get the big plays, the big tackles, and to really. Uh, just keep their composure here. The Spartans of Manchester in their all-black uniforms at midfield right now with their senior captains. Number two, the running back, Jalen Love. We'll call his name throughout this afternoon's contest as well. Senior number, or excuse me, junior number four, Davion Davis is out there as well. And then the big boys in the middle, Sam Huffman, the senior number 97 from Bremen, Indiana. The senior at 6'1", 235. And number 58, Connor Hinman, the tri-central product. He is a junior captain as well. And they're all black uniforms with gold numbers. Defiance on the road in their gold helmets. White uniforms with purple trim. They will shake hands at, center at, at midfield. And we will get ready to kick this one off as Manchester comes in at 0-7 on the season. Defiance at three and four, two and two in HC, AC play. Uh, as you mentioned, senior day, easy to get fired up for this one. Um, if you're Manchester, what is the mindset going in as far as, hey, we're going we're gonna to roll the dice on everything today to try to get a win? Yeah, I would say if I'm Manchester, they're receiving the ball right now. Mm -hmm. I would just take a shot deep just to set the tone, even if it is successful or not, just to show them that, you're not afraid to do anything in this game, and you're putting it all out there today. Uh, uh, and I'd also just be ultra, ultra aggressive with the run 
game as well. I'd hand it off, get back up to the line, hand it off, get back up to the line, and keep going. And uh, I would consider the entire field four down territory if I'm the coach going into this one with my seniors. Haven't won a game yet, and at this point, it's it's all about them uh, and honoring them. And I think um, just letting them call some of the shots could be huge as well. Yeah, I like getting the football here if I'm Manchester. Right off the bat, emotion still going, fresh off the awards and the photos taken for senior afternoon. Let's get the football. Let's make some plays. Let's move the sticks here early and often, and obviously protecting the football is going to be key. Yes. So kickoff in the air, underway, and it'll be fielded at the 8-yard line. Passes the 20, cuts back, tries to shimmy out of a tackle, and they'll start right at about the 25-yard line for Manchester College, where the senior quarterback, Eric James from Decatur Central, will be under center. Jalen Love, again, the big running back from Avon. He can put up some numbers. He can get downfield quickly. We'll see how this Yellow Jacket defense, you got to love a college football game where the band is playing. Yeah, you do got to love it. I bet that fires them up even more because they it's a, a, a really settling in at this point, uh, knowing that it's senior day, college football atmosphere, and they're ready to go here. So Jalen Love in the backfield. Eric James out of shotgun, three wide receiver set. To the left. First play, quick handoff. Gets past the line of scrimmage, met immediately. And it'll be no gain. Set up a second down and 10. And again, you chip away at that running game, which should lead you hope for, uh, for that play action and maybe take some shots deep. Yeah, if you're able to find some momentum for it, it'll be perfect. But uh, what uh, Manchester's offensive line is going to need to focus on here uh, uh, with Defiance's defense in this 4-3 looking kind of nickel defense is the backers are going to be quick, so they got to be able to move up levels uh, quicker than their backers get there. James takes the high snap, keeps it. little option pass here. He tries to squeeze out of it. He will pick up moving forward for Smith of about five yards, so it set up, sets up a third down and manageable. And this is the play if I'm Manchester's coach, I'm taking a shot or something deep. Uh, maybe down the middle, uh, uh, or a one-on-one -on -one matchup that you like even. Um, I'd throw in some kind of post corner, some kind of uh, maybe even corner post, uh, whatever it may be. Four wide set. James looks over. He's got Wolsey to his left. Two-step drop, fires, and it's picked off. Overthrew him, picked off. And we pushed out at the 30-yard line. It was Ty Quez Douglas, the Hopkins Kentucky Junior, with the interception. And Defiance with the first turnover of the afternoon. And they'll start inside the 30-yard line. And he had his receiver, honestly, right at the sticks. It just may have slipped out or he didn't get his shoulder down enough to drive that ball to his receiver. And uh, lucky enough for Defiance, um, their corner was just sitting right there. So the market officially at the 26-yard line and, and timing. Look, this is, a, this is a quarterback coming in that maybe doesn't have that timing down at the wide receivers. It may take a few possessions to get that. We saw the timing just a little bit off there. Ball overthrown and intercepted. So we'll see Defiance, the Yellow Jackets, for the first time on offense, starting at the 26-yard line. Handoff, lowering the shoulder, pushing forward, and Tyshawn Freeman, all six foot of him, He's a big boy, 237 pounds out of Macon, Georgia. Uh, you're going to need to tackle him low because he can get those extra yards after contact. You will need to tackle him low. He kind of reminds me of Jerome Bettis a little mm -hmm. bit from Pittsburgh, just that uh, big back who can move, though, and uh, that will be uh, dangerous for Manchester. But if they take him out at the knees every time, he's not going anywhere. Ambrose with a man in motion. Shotgun snap, handoff again to Freeman. And Freeman churns those legs, gets some help from the big man in front of him and takes it down to about the 20-yard line. So a third and short coming up here for Defiance. You're probably thinking two down, four down territory. It's definitely four down territory territory at this point. I don't know if they would uh, – if I was a coach for – uh, the Yellow Jackets, I would not be kicking a field goal on fourth down here early. I'd want to set the tone and go for it. I'd want to go for it anyway. Uh, but it, it does seem to be four down territory here, but I'd expect some type of play action here. So third and short. Manchester shows blitz picked up. 
to the end zone. Back shoulder fade and just overthrew his intended target there, Chris, Christian Trimble. Excuse me, that was Gibson, the intended receiver. And just a little bit of a timing issue there. Kind of stuttered, stepped with the throw, overthrows it for an incompletion. It looks like Defiance will elect to kick for three. And it looks like both teams maybe have some jitters right now. Mm -hmm. uh, they're trying to figure out their rhythm, and they're trying to set the tone in uh, the, the ways that they're wanting to get this game going. And uh, Gibson had a step on him. It was just a little bit overthrown there. So this one from about 37 yards out. Snap is down. Kick is up. It looks like it's got the distance, and it is true. So the turnover by Manchester leads to three points and a field goal from 37 yards out, 12.07 to play. Defiance strikes first, they lead three to zero. You're watching HCAC.TV, powered by Indiana SRN. At Morales Group Staffing, we are all about building better futures. And during these times, we are working hard to put people to work. We are now hiring for hundreds of jobs with pay up to 17 an hour. Visit our website at moralesgroup.net or Text JOBS, J-O-B-S, to 317-472-7600 to apply now and get hired today. We encourage you to follow us on Twitter, at Indiana SRN. Find upcoming games, video highlights, and much more. Follow us now at Indiana SRN. Welcome back to Manchester College. Early in the first quarter on HCAC.TV. Defiance, after the interception, turns it into three. They lead Manchester 3-0 to zero with 12.07 to play. First quarter, Tony Donahue, Peyton Brown with you. But Peyton, a nice defensive stand there to only allow the three points by Manchester's D. Huge for Manchester, and uh, uh, that's their, the best-case scenario they could have uh, uh, getting the ball back here. Return here, tries to get out of the tackle, but he will be tripped up at the 27-yard line. So that's where Manchester will take over for their second possession after the interception on third down on their opening drive of this senior afternoon. Keep up to date with every score and every school and every sport on the HCAC website, heartlandconf.org. That's heartlandconf.org. Eric James stays in the ballgame. Love in the backfield. Moss in motion. High snap. Quick pass strike. Caught to the 40. Tackled forward to the 42-yard line. Move the sticks. A nice little pitch and catch there. And the and the tight end, Peyton Fry, comes up with the catch. The fifth-year senior out of Southport. And uh, as we saw there, he was able to get his shoulder down and step into the throw, which, I mean, he's got a nice arm on him there. And if they're able to build off of that play right there, using the middle of the field, because as you can see, it's wide open mm -hmm. uh, uh, with what it seems like they're playing a cover two, maybe a cover two up top and man uh, down low. But if they're able to find those one-on-one -on -one matchups and create space and get the ball into their playmaker's hands in open field, they'll be, uh, they'll be set pretty nice here. So a nice route there on first down to move the sticks out of shotgun. Delayed handoff draw, gets back to the line of scrimmage. Few tacklers missing there and past the 50-yard line. Another first down, Jalen Love with a 16-yard pickup. And now uh, uh, Manchester's kind of maybe finding a rhythm with both components uh, on offense, run game and pass game. And if they're able to use this, then their whole playbook's going to be open. But a great uh, second play there after James's. Uh, a throw by a nice run with Jalen Love. So this drive started on the 26-yard line and back-to-back -back plays move the chains into plus territory. Ball on the 44-yard line of Defiance. Manchester in possession. Man in motion. High snap again. Corralled, handed off. Love met at, li met at the line of scrimmage and is tackled back for a loss of one. And that is... The linebacker, Dominic Harris, coming in for the tackle. And Harris just was, just was really, really downhill there, and he was able to fill the gap before the lineman could uh, work up to him. And like I mentioned earlier, uh, it'll be huge for Manchester to build to the linebackers, but when you have a linebacker as quick downhill as Harris was there, it's hard to get him. Yeah, that, that play, that pass play on first down, good, good for 17 yards. 
first completion of the afternoon. Looking for a second. He'll get it. Might get a face mask here. We will on the far side. And he squibbles out of it. Breaks about three tackles. And a great effort there by Leisure. And he gets enough for the first down. And more coming with the face mask penalty. And Leisure, just, he just kept his legs pumping. And that's why it's so important to... Uh, play to the whistle because mm -hmm. I think they thought they had him and they thought he'd go down easy, but he kept pumping, he kept going, uh, and he was able to get a first down plus a little bit with the face mask as well. But another great throw by James, finding his target quick, uh, uh, getting his shoulder down, stepping into the throw, and getting it, getting the ball out quick, honestly. So Moss with the incredible second and really third efforts there to spin out of what would have been a decent gain. Now we're going to march it all the way into the red zone. And I'll say this, in this first three minutes, Peyton, this is not a Manchester football team that looks that looks winless on the year. This looks like a team that's found some rhythm and maybe found a little something in their senior quarterback, Eric James. And I think it's because they're – I think they are playing loose. Like, they're not th – I think they understand they have nothing to lose right now and uh, relying on some senior leadership as well, as you said, with uh, James being a senior. Uh, they're – maybe they have a little excitement because it's new. Peyton Fry lines up. Barnett in the slot, shotgun snap, first down, three-step drop, fires, back of the end zone, up for grabs, and it is, oh, almost picked off. But he turned to run with it before he could corral it, and that was Isaiah Watts had the interception, dropped it. Sometimes better to be lucky than good there. Manchester escapes her second turnover, sets yourself up for a second down and ten. And again, Jordan Barnett had a step on uh, uh, that defensive back, but it looked like James maybe um, floated it just a little too much. If he got a little more in it, when you're throwing those corner routes, you literally want to throw it to the back pylon. So if he was able to do that, I think they'd be looking at six right now. But uh, lucky that that interception was dropped. Yeah, he certainly had a step on him there. If the ball was a little bit thrown deeper. Maybe it would have been enough for a first down, and D Manchester will call a timeout on the offensive side of the football with 9.27 to play, second and 10. We'll keep it right here. Hey, we want to thank Officially Human. Thanks to today's officials for their dedication and hard work. Without them, we do not play. If you don't have anything nice to say, please don't say anything at all. Sportsmanship is everyone's job. Tam Sweet and Savory Cafe. If you're looking for great food or breakfast or lunch, check out Tam's Sweet and Savory Cafe. They are great when it comes to baked goods. That's their specialty. They have daily specials and are open Wednesday through Sunday, 8 to 2. Tam's Sweet and Savory Cafe located 6427 Oakland and Road right here in Indianapolis. All right, let's go back to that 12-yard play, which then resulted in a 15-yard face mask that sets Manchester up here. Almost saw an interception on first down. Second down, you keeping the ball on the ground here, or are you going to throw another shot to the end zone? I'd keep it in the air because I think they got a little bit of momentum uh, with that. And this defense is extremely spread out. It looks like they're taking a safety and putting on on top of receivers. So what I would personally do is I'd split the running back out uh, in an empty spread look, and I would have him run a skinny post because the middle of the field is wide open right now. Six play of the drive, high shotgun snap, hand it off. Jalen Love gets to about the 15-yard line. That'll set up a third down and long. Let's see what they can do here. You know, we talked about playing free. We talked about taking risks. Looking for opportunities here. I mean, you're at the 15-yard line down three. Uh, it's just four-down territory. I would say they were, they're were they probably going to play it safe and kick a field goal if it comes to uh, fourth down. But I would say it's four-down territory because you want to be the one to uh, hammer down and set the tone. And I think the first one who chooses to maybe go for it and it pays off for him, that will be the team to have the momentum for the rest of the game uh, here. So if I'm Manchester, I'm getting – a little bit of yards here and making it manageable and then going for it. LeVar Leisure one-on-one -on -one, top of your screen. Throw back of the end zone. Caught! Did he get both feet in? I think he did. Touchdown! Jordan Barnett. A great throw and an even better catch to get both feet down. And Manchester finds the end zone on third and nine for the touchdown. And right here, as we see, as I mentioned on the last pass play that was dropped, he got more air underneath it, and he literally threw it to the back of the end zone near the back pylon. And with 
a, a tall receiver like Barnett, you can throw it up to somebody like that with a one-on-one -on -one matchup, and he'll come down with it every time. But just a great throw by James, uh, letting it rip there um, uh, and finding his target in Barnett for a touchdown. So one of the better pass plays of the season. Extra point is up, and it is good. So Manchester, a seven-play, 74-yard drive, ends in the end zone for a touchdown. They lead 7-3. to You're watching HCAC.TV, powered by Indian SRN. My name is Brittany. A little thing I love about the Egg White Grill is the toasty English muffin. It's toasted perfectly. It's just a little crispy, but not like hard crispy, but just crispy enough that when you bite into it, everything is perfect. <laughs> My name is Curtis, and I love the Egg White Grill because the egg itself, it's like soft and fluffy, like a pillow. I, and I, and I, I would eat my pillow, but I'd eat <laughs> the, the Chick-fil-A breakfast egg white sandwich for sure. They say nice guys don't finish first. So maybe it's time to reconsider what it means to be first. It's about being your best, but knowing you could be even better. It's being present, but respectful of history. You sure you want to make that move? It's donating something more valuable than money. It's believing in yourself and something bigger. It's coming from different families, but treating each other like brothers. It's not just being a man, it's being a mason. Welcome back to Manchester University, HCAC.TV, powered by Indiana SRN. It's a seven-play, 74-yard drive, and Manchester finds the end zone for the first time on senior day. A 15-yard pass from the senior, Eric James, finds sophomore Jordan Barnett. And some energy we talked about, Peyton, that they're going to need. They really showed it there. Kudos to them for coming out after the interception and finding the end zone. Well, it's just a short memory type of game if you make a mistake, and I think that's exactly what Manchester's choosing to do. They threw a pick. It was not what they wanted. They uh, uh, go down early, uh, maybe like they have a lot of this season, uh, but they were able to respond in a different way, and it, it looks like a different Manchester team out there right now uh, uh, behind uh, James at quarterback. So the ensuing kickoff goes out of bounds. And that's where Defiance will take over. The short field given to them after the interception on their first drive led to three points. The defense of Manchester holding up nicely on that field goal attempt. That'll be a five-yard penalty, so they'll move it forward. And I believe Defiance will start their second possession at the 40-yard line. So not as good a field position as they got after the turnover, but again, they'll start nicely here at around the 38. Great field position for him here. If Manchester can stop Freeman, they uh, they may shut down this offense. Shotgun set, man in motion. Quarterback keeper passes the 40, and a great tackle there to stop any more progress. A pickup of six on the quarterback keeper by Ambrose, and a nice tackle there uh, to avoid anything further by the linebacker, Dave Paul. Hurry up offense here. Stepping up in the pocket. Floats one. Out of bounds. Incomplete. And that'll set up a third down and four. It'd be huge here if Manchester, if their defense can hold again on third and four. And if I'm the Spartans right now, I'm bringing some kind of pressure because when the quarterback has to scramble, he's not able to set his feet really. And he looks honestly a little flustered as we saw there. He uh, uh, floated it way too high out of bounds. So... I'm bringing somebody off the edge coming quick uh, if I'm Manchester right now. Yeah, this this Manchester defense has made Ambrose look uncomfortable in, in, in the couple throws that we've seen uh, here on their first two possessions. And he's again out of shotgun. Rolls to the right, Ambrose looks, has a man at the 50, throws it, and it is batted around and almost picked off by Victorino. Nonetheless, off the field goes Manchester's defense on another third down stop. Forces Defiance into a punting situation. And what a break on the ball there as we saw. He, he realized what route it was. He realized it was a rollout. And then he, he saw his receiver uh, sit down on a comeback, and he just broke on the ball really quick. And if he was able to uh, keep that ball in his hands, he might still be running. Yeah, Victorino would have been uh, finding the back of the end zone on a pick six 
nonetheless, the incompletion forces a fourth and four, eight minutes to go first quarter. Here's the first punt for Defiance. It'll take a bounce. It'll hold up, and it'll go into the end zone for a touchback. So Manchester will take over on their third possession from the 25-yard line, under eight minutes to play. At 0-7, you lead 7-3. I think what worked there was the quick up-tempo offense. Um, a little bit of passing, a little bit of rushing here. What do you expect to see on this third possession by Manchester? Yeah, I expect some kind of momentum uh, uh, to be driven by Jalen Love in the run game, but I also think Manchester may keep it in the hands of Eric James here at quarterback. He is a risk taker with some balls that can be a blessing and a curse because he's not afraid to throw it in traffic, but as we've seen, it can be detrimental to him. But at the same time, uh, when he throws some contested throws, uh, he's able to find uh, receivers like Barnett who will win those one-on-one -on -one matchups. So I expect him to keep it in the air. James, 3 of 5 for 44 yards, a touchdown and an interception four minutes into this one. Quick pass after the fake handoff, and it's caught enough for eight yards. And again, I would stay on those, honestly, until they guard the middle of the field. If a defense is leaving uh, the middle of the field that wide open every time, I'd be throwing, running there, everything, just targeting the middle of the field. And then I'd make them pay outside because the minute that they start doing that, they're going to leave uh, the outside corners uh, not guarded. And I throw it up to a receiver like Barnett one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. So Moss with his first completion, good for nine yards, second and short. Delayed handoff met immediately in the backfield for a loss of four, so a second and one becomes a third down and five for Manchester's offense. And now Manchester hasn't had a bad time running the ball, but they've done better going outside because their running backs are quick. So if they're able to get maybe a quick pitch or a quick toss going, that could work better for them because the inside seems plugged by these linebackers, but their running back can beat the linebacker to the outside. So out of shotgun on third down and six. Three-step drop, a floater a little bit too much, and it is going to be picked off at the 40-yard line. Defiance will return it to the 25, the interception for the Yellow Jackets, the second of the afternoon. This time it's David Hunter, the freshman, and just a little bit too much air underneath that pass. And again, like I mentioned, it's going to be a blessing and a curse for him. He's willing to throw the contested balls, but he's got to be able to set his feet and get his shoulder down because yeah. he kind of threw with his shoulders just you know, parallel to the field. But if he can get his uh, uh, left shoulder down into his target, he'll have a lot more success. And he, he had, I mean, if he sets his feet there and fires a bullet, he had Moss open and enough for the first down. But again, the decision to float it in the air, as you mentioned, leads to the interception. Quick handoff, immediately Freeman lowers the shoulder, keeps on churning, and it'll be a pickup of about 16. Mark him down at the nine-yard line, first and goal coming up for Defiance. And Freeman just ran like a tank there. He put his shoulder down, and he just kept going. Uh, like I said, it's like watching Jerome Bettis out there. So they'll go quick. Freeman still in the backfield, takes the handoff, tries to get a hole, runs over his own center and then falls forward to the five yard line. So second and goal from the five. Backs against the wall for the second time halfway through this first quarter for the defense of Manchester. They allow just three points after the first interception, looking to do the same, if not better here, after the second interception thrown in the first quarter by Eric James. And the Spartans are doing exactly what I was just about to say, and it's bringing in some bigger bodies here. Uh, uh, with their backs against the wall, but I'm also sending my linebackers here. Uh, make sure that their men don't run around, but after that, pull the trigger and go. Ambrose, shotgun snap, handoff, Freeman. Freeman hit twice, hit three times, spins forward, and we'll see if the outstretched arms was enough to get into the end zone, and it is. So from five yards out, Freeman runs it in. For the touchdown and Defiance back on top, nine to seven. And defenders just bounce off of Freeman, as we see here. He has so many yards after contact. He was hit four, five, six times, uh, and then finally made it into the end zone. But that's going to be 
an issue for the Spartan defense if they uh, can't get him taken care of. So all Freeman on that last possession after the interception. He puts it into the end zone, and Defiance puts home the extra point with 5.24 remaining in the first quarter. Yellow Jackets with a 10-7 lead over Manchester. You're watching ACAC.TV, powered by Indian SRN. Can't get to a computer? Then we've got you covered. Just go to the Indiana SRN app and stay up to date with all of your favorite teams. You can watch live coverage or relive the experience with our on-demand service. All 10 points for Defiance here in the first quarter coming off of the turnover. Defiance goes three plays, 26 yards, and Tyshawn Freeman, all 26 of those yards, and from six yards out on first and or excuse me, on second and six, finds the end zone, and it's 10-7 in favor of Defiance. Here's the immediate return for Manchester and a little bit more momentum back on their side, getting it out to the 40-yard line. And a nice return there, setting them up uh, uh, on the plus almost to the plus side of uh, uh, the field for them and if we're Manchester I'm still sticking to the pass game but James um, if he's able to just stay cool in that pocket I know it's chaotic but if he's able to stay cool I think he'll have uh, what he had on that touchdown drive and then if they're going to run the ball they need to get it outside honestly Tony Donahue, Peyton Brown with you HCAC.TV powered by Indiana SRN James is 4-7 Two interceptions, one touchdown for 53 yards and a long of 17. Good field position here starting at the 38-yard line. Shotgun, high snap, met immediately. And it just seems like the timing of these snaps, by the time James corrals it, the defensive push for defiance is in the backfield for yet another loss. That's four rushing plays that have resulted in negative yards here early on for Manchester. And maybe it needs to be an adjustment made with the offensive line with their blocking because it looks like they're down blocking towards the run, but maybe they need to do a little bit of zone blocking and take the most dangerous man, and that's usually head up to directly outside of you. But uh, I could see why they want a down block, but it, it's, it's not working for them. Second and 13, play action, roll left side, ball in the air, and a little bit overthrown and incomplete with the intended re the intended receiver of Abagon, and this will set up a third and 13. And at this point, I'd come out in an empty set. I wouldn't even have anybody in the backfield and let him go run some type of route. Again, they're leaving the middle of the field wide open, but uh, maybe if they're able to have five receivers set, uh, split out and do some kind of uh, drag, unintentional pick play, basically, uh, they'd be able to find someone. And Serena Smith in the backfield alongside Eric James. Four wide receiver set. Man in motion. James looks for the screen. Fires across the middle. Caught at the 43-yard line. Pass midfield and down to the 49-yard line. Nice little pitch and catch. Enough for the first down. Move the sticks. There's Jordan Barnett again. And again, on these successful throws, we're seeing James. He's able to set his feet, find his target, uh, stay subtle in the pocket and fire it to him. And again, Barnett is a huge threat, and I try to find him more. You made a great point there, setting your feet, pointing your shoulder towards the receiver. When he's done that, he's been able to be incredibly accurate and get the ball downfield. When he doesn't and he's moving around those shoulders, that's when the interceptions have occurred. So uh, you got to have that three-second clock as a quarterback where you set your feet and throw the football before you scramble. Exactly. And as a quarterback, you – need to make a pre-snap read, which is tough because they could disguise a coverage as a defense. But if you can have an idea of where you're going to go with the ball before the snap, uh, then you can go through your progressions. And it looks like he did just that. First and 10 from the 49-yard line. Quick pass again. Caught. 
Pickup of six here. Sets the feet. Fires a good ball. Caught. Pickup of six. Second and short coming up. And as we see before he snaps the ball, you can see him looking around a little bit on the more successful throws. He's able to scan the defense a little bit. It's when he's flustered that he's having some issues here. So if we're defiant, we're bringing the pressure because that's what flusters him. But if we're Manchester, him being able to read the play like he is right now uh, and uh, find a target, um, uh, that'll be huge for them. LeVar Leisure with his second reception of the afternoon. Second and five. They're going to throw it again on the run. Floats it out of bounds. And wisely gets rid of it before taking the sack, setting up a third down and five, 322 to go first quarter. And maybe Manchester, too, needs to – it looks like the whole game so far the pressure has been coming off the right side. The right side, the right tackle may need a little bit of help, but if we're defiance, I'm overloading that, uh, disguising it with some type of twist or something here as it looks like they're coming out in cover two, leaving that middle of the field. Barnett with two catches for 32. Leisure with two catches for 17. Four wide set. Three-step drop. Steps up in the pocket. Fires it downfield. A man wide open. Caught at the 15, 10, 5. Touchdown. Moss Jr. from 47 yards out. And Manchester strikes to take the lead right back. 13 to 10. And what a play by James. He kept moving his feet. And it, when he moves his feet, you can tell he keeps his eyes downfield and he's able to find his target there wide open. And way to just keep the play alive because sometimes as quarterbacks, when you're flustered, pressured, whatever it may be, you give up on the play, you try to run it, maybe throw it away like he did the play before. But keeping his eyes downfield is what made that play successful. Coaches say throw the records out the window and Manchester – Strikes again from 47 yards out. A touchdown pass to Moss Jr. 314 to play. Manchester back on top. 14 to 10. You're watching HCAC.TV, powered by Indiana SRN. From warehousing to transportation and everything in between, Piper Logistics does it all. Centrally located, Piper Logistics has two warehouses in Indianapolis and a warehouse in Cincinnati, Ohio. Piper Logistics houses over 1 million square feet. Along with our transportation department, we can provide service to half the United States markets. We encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Indiana SRN. Hit the bell to get notifications for upcoming games and more. Watch as many games as you want, as many times as you want. Six plays, 62 yards, the scoring drive for Manchester, their second touchdown of the afternoon to take a 14-10 lead on senior day. Over Defiance with 314 remaining in the first quarter. It was a 17-yard strike on third and 14. And here's a little squib kick. It's going to bounce back, and Manchester gets the bounce, and they recover, they recover the onside kick. And what a, a – a call by the coaches there he did a little pooch kick right to the open uh, zone of that return and all of defines players they were just looking up at the ball and watching it bounce nobody wanted to go catch it i guess and uh, manchester capitalized and on third and five eric james fires a strike to moss jr from 44 yards out the extra point good to make it 14 to 10 and we talked about this in the outset stealing a possession Two turnovers, but now they get the onside kick and find themselves in plus territory. And it looks like they were inside our headset pregame because <laughs> they are playing loose and they're not thinking too much. I don't think James, especially, he's setting the tone with able to uh, have a short term memory like when he throws the picks. He responds with throwing a touchdown the next drive. And now calls like this with uh, uh, the coaching staff, I mean, you got to give props to him with staying aggressive. So Defiance is defense, no real break there besides the kickoff. They're back on the field. After giving up a six-play, 62-yard touchdown drive last time out. Under pressure. Quick fire to the right side here just to get rid of it and avoid the sack. No receiver in sight. And they'll talk about it. I did get over the line of scrimmage, but I didn't see an intended target. Now, was he outside of the box? The refs will get together here to see if this is intentional grounding.
The Commissioner's Cup is a rotating trophy awarded to the institution that garners the most overall sports points. Congratulations to Rose Holman, the 2022-2023 winner of the HCAC Commissioner Cup winner. And it will indeed be an intentional grounding call here. So, so loss of down spot of the foul. So second and long coming up here for Manchester. I mean, I get it, right? You don't want to give up the sack. And you throw it just to get the football away. But again, you have to have an intended target. Nobody was there. Ball bounces innocently to the ground. And a penalty for Manchester that will put him back on the negative side of the football. But second down and long coming up here. But they've been able on second and third long here early on, Peyton, to convert. Yeah, they're able to just uh, uh, not really think about the distance. I'm not thinking they just uh, have been playing their type of football that they've chosen to play today. So it'll be interesting to see what kind of shot they take here. For a wide set, James, shotgun. Immediate handoff to the 50, gets it maybe to the 49, so a pickup of three yards on second and 21. Third and 18 from the 49-yard line after the short pickup by Jalen Love. And now I know we'll see a shot here, and if uh, I'm James, I'm not – I'm being aggressive with it, but I'm not throwing it into an area where it could get picked off because the last thing you need right now is a turnover. Uh, because if they don't get it, then they may be able to pin them deep with a punt. James, out of gun, looks under pressure, steps up, passes the 49-yard line, throws a sidewinder to the 40. It is caught and out of bounds at about the 43-yard line. So a nice sidearm pass there right at the line of scrimmage, complete to Moss Jr. And it sets up a fourth down and manageable. You're kind of in no man's land here. It would be a 52-yard field goal. We'll see what they decide to do on fourth down. And it looks like they're keeping their offense out there, which I like. I, I think you got obviously nothing to lose here. So choosing to do this, your offense has momentum. Your team has momentum, and I think this is uh, this will be interesting here. So fourth and seven after a 12-yard pickup. We'll see if the, uh, the, if the quarterback keeper is uh, at play here. Looks like he's had some space. Steps up, fires, caught at the 30, shakes out of a tackle, spins forward, gets enough for the first down, down to the 25-yard line. A nice pitch and catch there. Leisure with his third completion, but he's down. And it looks like he hit the ground hard there. And it did a great job of spinning out of the first couple of tackles to ensue the first down. But, yeah, looks like shoulder contact to the turf. Nice catch here. Spins enough for the first down, passes a 30, and then gets slammed into the turf at the 25-yard line. So we'll have an official timeout here as Manchester driving. This is the team that averages five points a game. They have 14 in the first quarter, and within striking distance of their third touchdown in the first quarter, they're putting up numbers that they haven't put up in games this season. Mm -hmm. And they're I think they're just wearing that chip on their shoulder, and they're really just – taking an underdog mentality here and uh, choosing to build off of their momentum. And like I have mentioned a few times now, they have a short memory because mm -hmm. they have made mistakes. They've given the ball back in uh, uh, scoring distance for defiance. That's where their two scores come from because they got the ball back within the 20 yard line. But after those drives, they're able to score touchdowns. They're able to recover onside kicks and they're able to drive like this. So if Manchester can keep that sort of mindset going here, uh, it'll be good for him, but Defiance needs to find a way to stop this momentum. Yeah, Manchester has converted three times on third and longs here in the first quarter. It's first and ten, handoff, and a gain of about four yards down to the 22-yard line. Love with a couple yards there, sets up a second down and six with a minute 25 to go first quarter. And it looked like Love may have been almost caught in the backfield, but he just kept his legs moving, and, and he ran really, really hard there to fight for a few extra yards, which is what they needed. And uh, I suspect that they'll use that run play right there to set up maybe some play action or something. And uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we see him throw it up to, um, to Barnett again. So the 14-yard completion on fourth and nine keeps the drive going to a second and seven, under a minute to go. James steps up in the pocket, fires it across the middle, and it is caught enough for a first down. First and goal coming up from the nine-yard line, and 
But there he is again, Darrell Moss Jr. with his fourth catch of the afternoon. And James is just able to be a threat right now because not only can he make uh, plays last with his feet when the pressure comes in on him, but he's able to keep his eyes downfield. And again, uh, he's finding Moss. It seems like those two got a little bit of chemistry going right now. So first and 10, 25 seconds to go. First quarter, Manchester with a 14 to 10 lead after two interceptions have led to 10 defiance points. Here's a snap, though, back of the end zone. It worked the first time, and it's going to work the second time. Jordan Barnett with his second touchdown catch of the afternoon. They find Painter from nine yards out to take a 20 to 10 lead. And again, he just lets it rip. He takes one step and he throws it up to him again to the back of the end zone, which it's able to go over the DB's head, as we saw there, right into uh, Barnett's hands. And uh, what a momentum shift, change, just the tone being set by Manchester here today. Yeah, and, and those two touchdown passes to Barnett look eerily similar. The first one from 15 yards out to the back of the end zone. This one from nine. And the extra point is up and good. 16 seconds to play. First quarter, Manchester with their third touchdown of this opening frame. They lead the Fiants 21 to 10. You're watching ACAC.TV, powered by Indiana SRN. We are in for a shootout here on Indiana SRN. You're watching ACAC.TV. Tony Donahue, Peyton Brown with you. And a nice drive there after recovering the onside kick. They go seven plays, 40 yards, capped off by a nine-yard touchdown strike, the second of the first quarter for Barnett, 21-10 to 10 in favor of Manchester. And got to be honest here, Peyton, we didn't see this one coming. No, did not see this coming at all, but my goodness, Manchester came to play today, and uh, Defiance has been caught a little bit on their heels. And, you know, we talked about this in the outset. It's senior day, so there's added emotion to that. There's an, evil, there's an added level of pride, you know, kind of reset, throw the records out, win today's game. That's all that matters. Go 1-0 today. We talked about stealing some possessions. Uh, the, the onside squib kick bounced their way. Uh, you take away those two interceptions that led to Defiance's 10 points. This has been all Manchester in the first quarter. This has been all Manchester. And right here where Defiance is at, this is, I think, a dream possession for Manchester because they're finally in negative territory. So, Quick handoff. Met immediately, but you got to go low. Skips out of it. Enough for the first down to the 50 to the 45-yard line. And that's where Tyshawn Freeman, six foot, two hundred and. 37 yards, that's what he can do if you don't tackle him on that first initial contact. As you mentioned, he can get plenty of yards after the first contact. We've reached the end of the first quarter. Manchester leading 21-10 to 10 over Defiance on senior afternoon. You're watching ACAC.TV, powered by Indiana SRN. You're good at making big announcements. We're having a go! <laughs> We're good at your insurance. Start with Indiana Farm Bureau Insurance, online, over the phone, or in person, and stop knocking on wood. We encourage you to follow us on Twitter, at IndianaSRN. Find upcoming games, video highlights, and much more. Follow us now at Indiana SRN. We encourage you to follow us on Twitter at Indiana SRN. Find upcoming games, video highlights, and much more. Follow us now at Indiana SRN. Welcome back to HCAC.TV, powered by Indiana SRN. Tony Donahue, Peyton Brown with you through one quarter. 
Manchester with a 21-10 lead. Defiance on a first and 10 play action, throwing it deep. This is bad of the way, incomplete, so great defensive presence there by Winder. Let's take a look back at some of the first quarter stats. The senior starting on senior night for the first time, Eric James, 11 of 16, 165 yards, three touchdowns, and two interceptions. Moss Jr., four catches, 71 yards, and a touchdown. Barnett, three catches, 46 yards, and two touchdowns for Defiance on the offensive side of the football. We'll get to those stats in the first quarter after this play. Right side, spins out of one tackle, spins out of another. It'll be tackled forward at the 45-yard line. So let's look for Defiance here. Uh, short field position on the two interceptions led to those 10 points, Peyton. Yeah, and it looks like they're having a little trouble knowing what to do right now because I think they're a little surprised with what's going on. Uh, after having those t two quick uh, scores for them, but uh, Manchester capitalizing a little more than they have, and now they're in a little bit of unfamiliar territory. And like we've said before, Ambrose, when he gets uncomfortable, seems like he doesn't know what to do, so that O-line needs to uh, protect a little longer for him. Third and long on the 45-yard line. Shotgun snap. Ambrose looks under pressure. Rolls left, rolls right, tries to get out of it, and he's going to be sacked. A loss of four there. And on third down, Jalen Grimes, who was named to the D3Football.com Player of the Week list, gets the sack, and that'll force a punt. So the momentum continues on the side of Manchester. And they just seem to be capitalizing with everything. Defiance, their entire team aura right now is just a little down, and uh, uh, Manchester has all the energy in the world, and they're building off of that. Ambrose yet to complete a pass in this game. He is 0 for 4 to start. Here's the punt. It's a low kick. It'll bounce at the 15, and we'll take a defiance bounce to the 10-yard line. So that's where Manchester will take over with 13.20 to play in the first half. And we have a flag back around where the ball was kicked. We'll see if it's a running or a roughing the punter. Won a five-yard penalty, won an automatic first down. We'll see what the call is here. I didn't see it. Um, I thought it must have been after. Um, he, uh, he looked like he flopped a little bit, but yeah. he got the flag. He didn't blatantly run into him. So here's the call. Yeah, so running into the kicker, a five-yard penalty. I'll just decline it. And it'll be first down, Manchester. 90 yards to go to find Painter. But Peyton, tell me, uh, Eric James, what a first quarter for him. Throws three touchdown passes. Uh, more of the same here on this drive. A phenomenal first quarter by him, and they need to just keep building it. At some point uh, later in the game, I'd say as a coach, you need to try to possess the ball. Mm -hmm. But right now, I just say go guns blazing, uh, let it rip, and let, him, let the senior quarterback have some more fun on senior day. Uh, for these guys because he obviously has all the support from his teammates, all the confidence from them with uh, his performance so far, and I just keep using him. And it looks like they're going to as he's looking around. It looks like he's reading the field right now. Four wide receiver set James in the backfield, hands it off left side. Plenty of speed, plenty of burst, enough for a first down. And it's Cam, it's and Serena Smith for the first down. And Smith just hit the turbo once he found the hole. And the left side of the line for Manchester seems to be their stronger side. So if they're able to get outside to that side a few times uh, to set up a little bit of pass and keep this defense on their heels, they'll most likely be able to uh, score anytime they want. So the first and 10 run goes for 16 yards, enough for another first down. They'll hand it right back to Smith. Gets the line of scrimmage, cuts back, and he's tackled by three or four Defiance players. On the swarm there was Coltrane with the tackle from behind to pick up of two, th second down and eight coming up. And again, they're not having much success running to the right side, so I'd honestly keep it to the left. But uh, uh, still, what an effort by him to make something out of nothing there. So second and eight. This drive started at the 10-yard line. Now out to the 26. Shotgun snap. Three-step drop, quick pass, left side, wide open, caught out of bounds at the 32-yard line. Nice pitch and catch there, and Bellman on the board. It's his first catch of the afternoon. 
And just a quick throw there as we're seeing if he's able to set his feet, he's able to get the ball to him quick. But uh, um, here, I wonder if they'll be conservative or I wonder if they'll try to take a deep shot. Well, it's third and about three yards. Make it a long two. Four wide set, handoff, plenty of space. Man in front makes another man miss. Off to the races go Smith to the 40 and drug down from behind at about the 35-yard line. So a nice play there on third down, and Manchester's done a great job. That is their fourth conversion on third or fourth down here in this first half. And I think something that we're seeing here is this uh, Yellow Jacket defense is tired. Mm -hmm. They're getting tired because they're on the field constantly. And uh, as we're going to see here, he's able to just find a little hole and burst. And a uh, great blocking downfield by the whole team, able to open up some more holes for him. But like I was saying, this Yellow Jacket defense is getting tired. They've been out there a majority of this game. So and Serena Smith now with 45 yards rushing in the first half. It's Love in the backfield. And we'll have a false start penalty, so move it back five yards for a first and 15. Peyton, I mean, you've, you, they've done everything right. They've thrown the football well besides the two interceptions, yes. They've ran the football well. They've kept defiance the offense off the field. They are controlling the time of possession. This is a Manchester team that, on paper, didn't look like they were going to have a shot today. They find themselves up 21-10. Different to play with the lead, though. Very different to play with the lead, and I think it's given them confidence. I think that's something that they probably have struggled with this season coming into this game 0-7, but now that they've found it, uh, they're using it to do whatever they want now. First and 15, 11 to play. First half, pump fake under pressure, and he will go down. So a sack there, the third of the afternoon for Defiance. It's Richard Pope, the fourth. And we have a flag on the play. And we're going to have a holding. Yep, an eligible man downfield. They'll, dec they'll decline that penalty after the sack, take the sack yardage, and it'll be second down and long coming up. So Defiance could use a, a, a big stop here on the next two downs to get their defense to get their defense off of the field. The time of possession here has been controlled by Manchester throughout this first half. And it looks like they just waved the flag. So here are your stats so far through this one. Manchester has 12 first downs to Defiance with two. 58 rushing yards on both sides of the football so far. And Manchester has completed 12 passes, while Defiance has yet to complete a pass on offense. Second and 19 screen, screen pass, wheel route caught to the 30. Gets almost back to the original line of scrimmage, a pickup of about seven. Third and 12 coming up there, and it's Davis making his fifth catch of the afternoon. And James getting the ball out quick is going to be the key here to converting. Uh, as we've seen, when he's able to get it out quick to his playmakers, they're able to just be in open space and make some people miss and get the yards that they need. But uh, I'd imagine, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if he went up to Barnett here. That's been his favorite target, it seems like. Yeah, Barnett and Davis. Davis in the slot. Davis runs the L route, a little quick dump off here, caught. See if it gets the sticks enough for a first down and inside the red zone. So a nice crossing route there from Peyton Fry. He turns on the Jets, gets enough for a first down. The 13th of the afternoon for Manchester, and they'll be inside the red zone. Oh, let's see, they're going to call him just short. And I like that they're keeping their offense on the field here. Maybe they'll go with some kind of uh, quarterback sneak like the Eagles. Maybe a hard count to get Defiance to jump and see what you can do. So the sticks on the far side didn't see where exactly they marked them out. Nonetheless, fourth and one. Fakes the handoff, looks, fires back of the end zone, one-on-one, -on -one, up forward, and it's going to be overthrown and incomplete. So Manchester goes for it on fourth and one. They go for the home run ball, and it is overthrown, and Defiance's defense holds strong, turnover on downs, and they will look for their first pass completion of the afternoon, a disappointing end of the drive there for Manchester. It was a disappointing end, and he had him. It's just it looks like they got a little tied up there in the end zone. They were both fighting for it, and uh, Barnett wasn't able to jump 
Uh, if he was able to get a little uh, bounce there, he could have come down with it. But uh, regardless, now the Yellow Jackets need to build off of this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, points on this possession will be huge. You look at the second quarter, that one possession, uh, negative three yards rushing. And again, no completions here for Defiance on the offensive side of the football. They take over with their second possession of the second quarter, trailing 21 to 10. We'll have a uh, switcherouski of the footballs, and we can hear Manchester's crowd. I mean, they are getting into it. It is senior afternoon. They have an 11 point advantage. And they got all the momentum right now. And if we're the Yellow Jackets, I think you just you give that thing to Freeman every play. And they'll do it. Freeman hit immediately and dropped. They tried to keep him going, but a nice tackle there to wrap up the big man, not let him get back to the line of scrimmage. It'll be an official loss of two. So second down and two coming up for Defiance. And if Manchester ties down Freeman, I don't know what they're going to do because Ambrose hasn't had great success throwing the ball. But uh, uh, the key to this offense is being able to use Freeman whenever they want. Uh, and using Ambrose at different times, but great, great uh, first play by Manchester there. So quarterback roll out here to the 20, lowers the shoulder, does not get to the first down marker, so a third down and short coming up here for Defiance. We have a late flag. Possibly a late hit, we'll see. So that eight play 73 yard drive for Manchester ends with the fourth and one in completion. Defiance trying to steal some momentum back here early on in the second. So Gibson with the unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. And a third and manageable. It gets erased by the penalty. And it seems the emotions may be getting to the Yellow Jackets here. They probably didn't expect or didn't feel like they would be down, but they are. And it's going to be important for them to keep their composure and just put together a drive and build off of that. Because they had third and manageable, and now it's third and long. So third and long coming up after the penalty in the shadows of their own end zone. Ambrose out of shotgun. Man in motion. Three wide set. Handoff. Freeman, and he's going to spin his way forward for a pickup of five, and, and that was more so just to give the punter a little bit more room here coming up on fourth and ten. Shout out to uh, Manchester's defense. And a great stop by them like we've seen in this game. Manchester has been able to respond in a good way after something doesn't go their way because obviously you want to capitalize on a drive. They didn't get to uh, with that incomplete pass on fourth and one, but their defense is three and out. And the 10 points on the board for Defiance has came via the turnover, the two interceptions that allowed Defiance to start possessions inside the 35-yard line. Low snap, punt is up, bounces at the 45, and it'll be picked up and immediately taken down. So, again, Manchester will start with good field position. They'll start on the 48-yard line. We want to thank Wheeler Mission. Move your feet so others can eat. Be part of the Drumstick Dash on November the 23rd, beginning at 9 a.m. through the streets of Broad Ripple. This is a two-and-a-half-mile run or walk. For more information, sign up today, drumstickdash.org. If you want to gain prominent exposure through on-site branding, social media mentions, and more, contact us today, coach at indianasrn.org. Manchester playing with the lead for the first time this season. 21 to 10 over Defiance, 7.46 to go, first half. James, quick handoff, met immediately in the backfield. It'll be a loss of two as the pursuit there by Coltrane. That's his second tackle for loss in this first half, second and 13 for Manchester coming up. And these backers uh, uh, from Defiance have been so quick downhill. That's how Coltrane is able to get there. He's able to read that it's a run, and then usually defenses have a gap responsibility. He finds his gap, he shoots it, hits him straight in the backfield there, uh, and shuts it down. So second and long. 
James will stay out of shotgun. And Serena Smith in the backfield with him. Three wide to the left. Far side of your screen. Pump fake. Gets out of it. Has a man on the wheel route. Throws it. And it is picked off for the third time. Defiance comes up with an interception. Marat was there. He had the intended target. You needed that floater pass right there to get to him. This time he fires a strike, and it's picked off for the third time here in this first half. Yeah, he, you probably would have preferred to have a little bit of touch because he's Ooh. right there, but uh, he wanted to zip it in there, and it goes right to the defender there. But, again, like we've talked about, James, he's not afraid to take risks, but it's going to be a blessing and a curse, unfortunately, because – He's been picked off three times now. Yeah, three touchdowns, three interceptions. Manchester still with a two-possession advantage, 21-10. to 10. Can Ambrose and Defiance make him pay? Ambrose looking for his first completion of the afternoon. Instead, he will keep it, tackled out of bounds for a pickup of two on the quarterback keeper, 6.36 to go, first half. And props to the Spartan defense because they really have not given – the Yellow Jackets, any room to breathe, and they really have not found a, uh, a rhythm outside of Freeman running the ball, and that's what they're looking for here, but um, Manchester hasn't given it to him. Five wide set, throw, right side, complete, 45-yard line, shakes out of a tackle, 45, and then tackled enough for the first down to the 20 to the 31-yard line. Excuse me, it's the first pass completion by Ambrose. And he completes it to the right side. Hollinsworth grabs it, takes it forward for a first down. And maybe that's exactly what Ambrose needed right there to find his confidence. Delayed draw handoff here. Gets past the initial line of scrimmage and a pickup of seven. So a second and three coming up here. Now Defiance seems to be getting the, the wheels churning a little bit more with this no huddle offense. Ambrose out of gun, man in motion. Looks for the screen, looks back, right, caught. Hollinsworth again. Enough for the first down, tackle to the 15-yard line. And this quick hit offense, I think, could be the key that the Yellow Jackets were uh, looking for because it's keeping Manchester tired. And they've been on the field a little longer here in the second quarter, and them getting up to the ball quick uh, is getting them more yards. So fakes the handoff, screen pass, caught to the 10-yard line. And the play action working. Rome gets his first completion of the afternoon market officially at the 11 yard line so third and short coming up and defiance will continue in this no huddle hurry up offense ambrose left side quick screen caught and a nice tackle there in open space by number 39 winder that'll set up a third down are you thinking four down territory here or does it, you go with the field goal to make it a one score game down two scores going into the half. I think it's four down territory to bring it closer because Defiance does get the ball after half, so then mm -hmm. you'd be able to take the lead. But I could also see why they would stay reserved, kick the field goal, because, again, they get the ball after half, and they'd only be uh, down eight points. And we'll see what they do here on third and four. From the eight-yard line, Ambrose, man in motion, shotgun, two-step drop, fires across the middle, caught. Touchdown to the end zone goes Cole Rucker, the tight end, his first catch of the afternoon. And it was just man-to-man -man defense there, and Rucker was able to beat his man uh, because he got caught looking in the backfield, as we saw there. And Ambrose, a uh, great, great throw by him, able to find a little bit of a rhythm in his passing game this drive. So all 17 points here with the extra point pending for Defiance coming off of three interceptions. The extra point is up, and it is good. 4-16 to play first half. Defiance with the touchdown. Cuts the deficit to four. Manchester leads 21-17. You're watching the ACAC.TV, powered by Indiana SRN. Your hauling or moving project has arrived, and College Hunks Hauling Junk and Moving has you covered. Honest. Uniform. Nice. Knowledgeable.
service. Calling trunks, hauling junk, and moving. Can't get to a computer? Then we've got you covered. Just go to the Indiana SRN app and stay up to date with all of your favorite teams. You can watch live coverage or relive the experience with our on-demand service. Seven plays, 49 yards after the interception leads to seven points. It's a nine-yard touchdown strike to Cole Rucker, and Defiance cuts it to a one-possession game. They trail 21-17, to and so in kickoff, Smith has it, takes it to the 35-yard line. So 21-17 to the score, 17 points from Defiance, all coming off of Manchester turnovers. We're going to have a late flag here. It'll be a unsportsmanlike conduct penalty on Defiance, so Manchester will start this possession with good field position under four minutes to play in the first half. Tony Donahue, Peyton Brown with you. HCAC.TV, powered by Indiana SRN. We want to thank Boilermaker Local 374. They can offer you a career as an iron shipbuilder, blacksmith, or general helpers. For more information, contact the International Brotherhood of Boilermakers, 219-845-1065. We'll wait the penalty call here. So a add 15 yards onto the already decent return there, and Manchester's offense with 354 remaining will start at the 49 of Defiance. They are already in plus territory. And that's perfect for them and for Defiance. After scoring that touchdown, you got to be able to stay under control and keep your composure because we've seen the emotions be high, but you got to be able to stay cool even if you don't want to because with an offense like Manchester, they, they can score quick. So first and 10, ball in the 49, handoff. And met immediately a loss of two to Jordan Love and a great defensive pursuit there by the linebacker, number 44, Dominic Harris. And the inside runs have been plugged the entire game. Where they have found success is off tackle and outside, specifically to the left side. So if they're going to keep running, I'd use that to their advantage instead of trying to trying to uh, fix something that's already broke. Manchester controlling the clock here with 3.22 to play. Uh, second and 11. You don't want to give Defiance the football back with time on the board to possibly steal another score, especially going into halftime, as you mentioned. Peyton, they will get the second half kickoff. Here is the handoff and met immediately in the backfield. These delayed handoffs not going anywhere, and the Defiance push drops them for a loss of four, so a third and 15 coming up here under three to play. And again, it's uh, that right side of the offensive line collapsing there, and I think Defiance is using that to their advantage, and I think they understand that they brought a little pressure to that side, which has been uh, uh, the Spartans' weak point of their offense thus far but uh on this play they need to get back to that pass game they need to find the momentum again so third and 15 after the unnecessary roughness penalty on the kickoff manchester started this drive and plus territory at the 49 and we're going to have a timeout charge to manchester with 220 to play a third and 15 coming up. The Heartland takes academics very seriously. Our athletes each must maintain a 3.5 GPA each year. Over 1,000 student athletes carry at least a cum accumulative 3.5 GPA and are named to the ACAC All Academic Team. I'm not that smart. I was not the all academic team, I can tell you that. Uh, <laughs> I definitely was not the all <laughs> academic team, man. I, I think that was probably I uh I would walk into the day and be like, what school again? <laughs> <laughs> so a third and fifteen here with two twenty to go. Again, uh you want to keep that clock moving or nonetheless make defiance burn a timeout. Uh, what are you dialing up on third and fifteen? I would say they need to target the middle of the field because it's been so wide open. Or if they're going to take a shot on the outside, I'd find somebody like Barnett uh, if he has a one-on-one -on -one matchup because Defiance has put safeties over top of threats that they have had this game. So I'd find something like that. But honestly, uh, I mentioned this earlier, 
I would do some kind of deep crossing routes to set an unintentional pick. So James out of shotgun, four wide set, three step drop, rolls to the left, fires it, caught at the 38 yard line. It'll be, I believe, we'll see where they mark it. It's gonna be close to the first down sticks. And they're gonna be just short. And Defiance will take a timeout, so it'll be a fourth down and three coming up here. A long three yards. Are you going for it, or are you sending the punt unit out if you're Manchester? I would send the punt unit out to confuse Defiance, and I'd run a fake punt if it were me as the coach because, you know, they wouldn't probably expect that. They, they're either expecting you to punt or to go for it, but make it look like you're going to punt and go for it instead. So maybe some kind of fake punt pass or uh, run to the outside or something like that. Uh, but regardless, I would use this as four down territory and not give Defiance uh, the ball back with any time left. Pars uh, possibly a, a hard count here too. Try to get them to jump, get that uh, first down uh, via the penalty, a fourth and four. A jump on the defensive side for Defiance would lead to a first down, uh, but plenty of options here. I like the fake punt. I mean, see what you got. The fake punt, the, I, I would almost do what I remember LSU doing it, it the punter runs up to one of the sides acting like he's going to rugby punt or whatever, and then he takes off with the yep. ball after the entire team turns their back and runs with it. But it'll just be uh, depending on if they bring a hot rush. And it looks – we'll see what they do here. And it looks like they're going to line up to punt it. Manchester with only ten players on the field. And now a lineman will check in for the 11th. We'll see if they try to get him the jump on a hard snap here. There's the snap. Delays it. Boots it. It's a good one. It'll take a hop, a skip, and a bounce in favor of Manchester. And Defiance will have to go 95 yards if they want to put up six before the end of the half. Manchester holding on to this 21-17 lead. Defiance, the only team to score here in the second quarter. Cuts that 2-4. So you got two minutes to go, two timeouts here. Maybe not looking to go 95 yards of the end zone, but certainly enough time to throw a few strikes to get in the field goal range. Yeah, certainly <laughs> enough time. For, it's the ultimate two-minute drill uh, here as we're going to see them come out here with a 95-yard drive pending. And uh, I think the important thing is going into half with some points. You don't got to score a touchdown. Getting a field goal to almost tie it, being down only one, and then getting the ball back uh, to start the second half. But uh, they got to be intentional here and aggressive with some urgency. Out of shotgun comes Ambrose. He's got Freeman in the backfield. He'll hand it off to him to try to gain some yards. He'll gain one, a little bit of a cushion. And for the second time, Freeman's helmet comes off. So we'll have an official's timeout. He'll have to check out for the play. And a second and nine coming up. Clock continues to run, 150 to play. Uh, a stop here. I, if I'm Manchester, I might burn that final timeout. I'd probably burn it just to give him a little bit of time left. Man in motion. Ambrose, quarterback keeper, has some space, gets it out to the 10, the 15, the 20, enough for a first down to the 30-yard line, and out of bounds he goes. So a nice decision there by Ambrose to keep it. He gains 29 on the play. It's enough for a first down, and importantly, Peyton gets out of bounds to save that timeout. And, yeah, I think they need to be keeping that in mind, just as Ambrose probably was when he was running to get out of bounds, keep the timeouts. They would, I would prefer, they, if I'm them, I'd prefer to have those two timeouts on the other side of the field. Shotgun right side, screen, caught, tackled immediately, spins out of it, breaks out of another one, enough for a first down and out of bounds at the 45-yard line. So move the sticks, the yards after the catch there, enough for the first down. And it looks like they're finding a little bit of momentum here. I would, uh, uh, keep balancing it maybe with the quarterback keepers and passes. Ambrose goes quick, steps up, looks, scrambles, under pressure, passes line of scrimmage, lowers his shoulder, <laughs> and it will be tackled at the 49-yard line, a pickup of three. 
And we'll see if Defiance selects to use a timeout, and they will. With 107 to play, they find themselves at midfield. It's been a heavy dose of the running game here on this possession. And Ambrose there, he, he probably should have gotten out of bounds, but he, I guess he wanted to set the tone there a little bit. And yeah. Bring the boom in, uh, uh, but it it leads them to have to use a timeout. Yeah, he lowered the shoulder there, stays in bounds. So both teams with one timeout remaining here in the first half. A second quarter dominated by Defiance. So 109, the clock will go back to. That's when the timeout was called, 21-17. Um, Defiance still with one timeout. The entire field open here on the next couple plays. Yeah, they have everything in their playbook available for them with all the room in the world. I'm thinking for if I'm Defiance, I'm milking it a little bit here and at least getting to the 30-yard line to set up a potential field goal for them. Or, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if they're aggressive enough to go for the end zone. So ball at midfield, second and, and short. Win picks up. Ambrose and Manchester will have a neutral zone infraction. So that should be enough for a first down. Call off sides. Five yard penalty. So it'll be a second and very short. Not enough for the first down, but second and less than a yard here. Itching ever closer to field goal range with 108 to go first half. So 109 back on the clock. The man asked nicely. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Welcome. And there you go. So 109 to go after the penalty. Second and one. Ambrose, shotgun snap. Four wide receiver set. Two to his left. Three-step drop, steps up. Had a man. Thinks twice about it. And he's going to be tackled to the turf at the 46-yard line. So the clock ticks under a minute to go. We'll see if they elect to use a timeout. So far, they have not. That'll be a third down and about two. And about 20 seconds have run off the clock with them just getting set up here. Five wide set, third and two. Watch for the quarterback keeper. Quick screen, caught at the 40, shakes out of one tackle to the 30-yard line. So on third and two, a pickup of 17, enough for a first down. Defiance calls their final time out. And they're right on the edge there of field goal range. You're looking at a 48-yarder from here. And right here, they got to be ready to get on the ball and spike it because I suspect they're probably going to bring in uh, Freeman and run it one or two plays maybe, probably just one play, and uh, uh, hopefully get enough yardage to be able to spike the ball with enough time left uh, to bring out that field goal unit. Tailor your sponsorship package to fit your unique marketing objectives and your budget. Contact us today. Coach at Indiana, srn.org. Tony Donahue, Peyton Brown with you. HCAC.TV, powered by Indiana SRN. On senior day from Manchester University, the Spartans using 21 first quarter points. That's the advantage. They lead 21 to 17. All 17 points from Defiance coming via the turnover. As Manchester has thrown three interceptions in this first half, and they are relying on their defense here to come up with a big stop. No timeouts left for Defiance. First and 10, 31-yard line. They'll look for a second play call. Does Jordan Ambrose. Three to the right. One wide receiver to his left. Man in the backfield. Ambrose looks to the end zone, fires it deep, and this is going to be overthrown incomplete. Second down and 10. And I like the idea because if they're doing this, that means they feel like they're in field goal range. Mm -hmm. um, so they're just using a couple of the downs to try to take a shot to the end zone here, which I think is a great call to try to see if they can find some kind of luck and they're out deep. 
Are you looking for the end zone here? Are you looking for a quick out route out of bounds to maybe gain, you know, seven, ten more yards, make it a, a shorter field goal, maybe a delayed draw on a spike? I would think they are probably going for the end zone again here, but maybe the out. Roll to the right. Oh. Ambrose, and he'll just get rid of it incomplete. Clock will stop, 19.7 seconds left in the first half. A third down and 10 coming up here. And I think this has to be either a touchdown, a completion out of bounds, and you certainly, if you're Ambrose, cannot take a sack. Not at all, and they they can't even get tackled in bounds at this point because they I don't know if they'll have enough time to get up there. Uh, the only option I see here is either maybe a quick out route to get them a little closer, but I, w I would suspect it'd be a shot to the end zone for them. Yeah, it might be a jailbreak field goal kick if, if this is uh, tackled inside the boundary. Ambrose, three-step drop, fires it. Nope, keeps it. Skimmy's out of it. No sack. He'll fire it. Caught enough for a first down. Clock will temporarily stop. They'll have to run the field goal unit out. I would spike it here, actually. You spike it. Oh, boy. Ref taking his time. And they'll spike it with point three. I believe there's point three left. And, boy, Peyton, you talk about living dangerously. You get enough for the first <laughs> down. You rely on the refs to play catch with each other. Ball bounces off the turf. And I think they got it spiked with point three left. And they're cutting it close there. They're going to put one second on the clock. And they like to cut it close there. I mean, that was a that was a dangerous throw for Ambrose yeah. <laughs> at the end of the half here with that. I mean, I would have thought he would have either thrown it to the end zone or towards the sideline, but that was directly in the middle of the field. Yeah, and it was really the third look. I mean, he pump fake, stepped up in the pocket, tried another look, wasn't there, then finally fired it. You talk about that clock in your head. He knew he had to get rid of it. It's enough, fortunately, for Defiance to get the first down, which temporarily stopped the clock, and they get up to the line of scrimmage to snap it. And this will be a 37-yard field goal attempt to end the half. It's already seven straight points for Defiance. Bad snap ball on the ground. This is going to be short. I think it was smacked at the line of scrimmage. So Manchester... Takes a little bit of momentum into halftime with the missed field goal from 37 yards out. And this remains a 21-17 lead for Manchester as we've hit recess on HCAC.TV. Peyton, this, uh, this first half for Manchester was a big first quarter, three touchdowns, three interceptions. But their defense has held well here throughout this first half. Yeah, their defense has held really strong because I think they've been able to feed off of their offense is momentum. They're not having to be on the field a whole lot like they have been this entire season. And they're able to actually breathe. And you can actually see how good they can be uh, uh, behind James as, as the quarterback here. But they need to just take the momentum that they've gotten uh, from the first half and uh, bring it back out in the second half. We will look back at the first half stats. We'll get Peyton's thoughts on the first half and some keys to the second half. We have reached... Halftime here from Manchester University on senior afternoon. The home Spartans with a 21-17 lead over Defiance. We'll be back. You're watching HCAC.TV, powered by Indian SRN. I am actually a fifth-generation student here at Manchester. Um, all four of my grandparents went to Manchester. Both of my parents went to Manchester as well. Um, I followed in the footsteps of my older brother as well in coming here. And that's kind of been a fun tradition to hear everybody's stories from Manchester while also making my own memories here. I didn't originally want to go to Manchester due to how close it was to home. Um, but I toured here first and I really loved this warm, inviting campus where people would open doors for you. And people would stop on the sidewalk and catch up for five to ten minutes. And when I was looking at other schools, I really missed that opportunity, that feeling of being at home. I realized that Manchester is really where I fit in and where I belonged. My two pieces of advice would be to get involved really early on. Um, there are a lot of great clubs on campus and organizations to be a part of. You get to find people who are like you and enjoy the same interests and activities as you. And it's a chance to grow as a person 
and to make a great group of peers and community and friends around you. Um, my other piece of advice would be to travel abroad. Um, Manchester has this really unique tradition with our January term classes and that's been probably one of my favorite experiences I've ever had here. Um, and I've had the awesome opportunity to travel off campus three times. I've signed up right now to go on the Hawaii cross-cultural um, class. Um, that's actually a fun one for me because that's a class that my grandfather started traveling to Hawaii to learn about the different cultures there in cross-cultural psychology. So I'm really hoping it gets to go, but um, if it doesn't, I'm sure I'll still get to learn about cross-cultural psychology and go to Hawaii at some point in my life. Another one I went on was a medical practicum to Guatemala, and that was a life-changing experience. Um, we went with 10 to 15 healthcare providers um, to a rural area in Guatemala that doesn't get healthcare on a yearly basis. And so it was amazing to see these healthcare providers provide care um, in an up close and personal view. My mom, Lori Zimmerman, um, was also a part of the medical practicum. Most kids get to visit their parents on the take your kid to work day. And um, I've never gotten to see her work until we were in Guatemala and I got to work with her for a day. And that was really interesting to see the impact she has on people. Um, see the tenderness as she um, works with people, but also the intelligence as she's running through her head, all the different diagnoses that could be, um, the best way to present information. It's really interesting to see how she uses her liberal arts Manchester education um, to apply the psychology as well as the communication she's learned with her medical advice and her experience. So that was a life-changing experience to be able to um, really immerse myself into the field of healthcare. Welcome back to Manchester University. We are at halftime of this ACAC conference matchup between Manchester and Defiance. The 0-7 Spartans on senior afternoon with a 21-17 lead over Defiance. Hey, at halftime, we want to give some love to the seniors from Manchester University here on senior afternoon. That includes the kicker, Matthew Mason, Jalen Love, the senior from Avon, Indiana. LeVar Leisure with four catches so far. He is a senior. Dave Paul out of Detroit, Michigan, a senior, as well as tied in. Justin Abagam, the senior from Chicago. Justin Major, the DB from Monroe, Michigan. James Hubbard, the linebacker, the senior from Alabama. The senior, Eric James, three touchdown passes in the first half on his first start of the season. Some other seniors on this Manchester roster. Jonah Randall from Atlanta. Sam Huffman from Bremen, Indiana. I've seen him on the defensive line. And Derek Doss from Indianapolis Howe. Uh, a very young team here for Manchester. Headed up by Coach Van Hunt. Trying to get some of these younger guys ready to go for the next upcoming season. And Manchester having the game of the year so far for the Spartans. They lead Defiance 21-17 to at halftime. We saw 31 points scored in that first quarter. Three interceptions thrown by Manchester. That led to the 17 points that Defiance has on the board. But Barnett with two touchdown catches from 15 and 9 yards out for Manchester. And a 44-yard touchdown to Moss Jr. The scoring so far in the first quarter, or excuse me, first half for Manchester. Let's look at the team stats. Manchester with 12 first downs. Defiance with nine. Rushing attempts even at 18 apiece. 96 rushing yards for Defiance, 50 for Manchester. 15 completions for 199 yards on the passing side of the football for Manchester. Eight catches for 94 yards, all coming in the second quarter through the air for Defiance. 199 passing yards for Manchester, 94 for Defiance. Penalties, three on each side, three for 10 yards for Manchester, three for 42 yards. Third down and fourth down efficiency on third down. Manchester's four of nine, Defiance three of seven, and on fourth down, 
one of two for Manchester, and Defiance is yet to go for it. Three interceptions, as mentioned, the turnovers in the first half for the Manchester Spartans, who have a 21-17 lead here in the first half of play as we've reached halftime on senior afternoon, HCAC play. Hey, don't forget to follow your favorite school on HCAC.tv, powered by Indian SRN, where you always have a front row seat. Tony Donahue, Peyton Brown with you. We want to thank the Morales Group, building better futures one story at a time. They have locations in Indy, Zionsville, Anderson, Columbus, and Lafayette. For more information, give them a call, 317-472-7600. And Piper Logistics, they specialize in everything from warehousing to transportation and everything in between. Three services, one solution. We do it all. For further information, give them a call, 317 317- 396-1023. This broadcast is copyrighted by Indiana SRN and the HCAC Conference for the private use of our audience, the use of pictures, videos, and audio without the express written permission of the HCAC is prohibited. We'll take a look back at some of the key plays in the first half, and we'll get Peyton Brown's keys to the second half of play here. HCAC Conference matchup at halftime. Manchester leads 21-17. You're watching the ACAC.TV, powered by Indiana SRN. From warehousing to transportation and everything in between, Piper Logistics does it all. Centrally located, Piper Logistics has two warehouses in Indianapolis and a warehouse in Cincinnati, Ohio. Piper Logistics houses over 1 million square feet. Along with our transportation department, we can provide service to half the United States markets. You're good at making big announcements. We're having a go! <laughs> We're good at your insurance. Start with Indiana Farm Bureau Insurance. Online, over the phone, or in person. And stop knocking on wood. You're good at keeping the car clean. We're good at your insurance. Start with Indiana Farm Bureau Insurance. Online, over the phone, or in person. And stop knocking on wood. I'm Keith Myers, Vice President of Indiana SRN. Thanks for joining us. You know Indiana SRN broadcasts 350 games a year, all sorts of sports. Yeah, we do. Hard to believe, isn't it? Indiana SRN loves to put student athletes first on our website. If you're a business out there, we probably could help you too. Contact us at coach at indianasrn.org. Grandma from out of state thanks you. Mom and Dad, who can't get to the game, thanks you as well. In fact, our athletes watch the games over and over again. Our military has enjoyed the games as well. So sit back and enjoy the game. It's Indiana SRN. We encourage you to follow us on Twitter, at Indiana SRN. Find upcoming games, video highlights, and much more. Follow us now, at Indiana SRN. We are at halftime from Manchester University on senior afternoon. The Spartans at halftime leading Defiance 21 to 17. HCAC.TV powered by Indiana SRN where you always have a front row seat. Tony Donahue, Peyton Brown with you. 
nonetheless, three turnovers, three interceptions. Outside of that, Peyton, a pretty impressive first half for Manchester. They take their first halftime lead of the season. Yeah, it was very impressive. And Defiance's only points came off of Manchester's turnover. So if Manchester can get rid of the turnovers and t take care of the ball, I think they could pull away. But as we saw at the end of the second half there, the Yellow Jackets found a little bit of momentum but weren't able to capitalize. Uh, but they get the ball first um, in the second half. So it'll be interesting to see how the energy levels are when uh, they both come back out for the second half. And some uh, great passing early on. For Manchester, as we talked about, Eric James, three touchdowns, uh, two of those to the back of the end zone, finding Barnett, uh, those coming from 9 and 15 yards out, the 44-yard touchdown strike to Moss Jr. Uh, we talked about this in the pregame, you know, just kind of playing free, playing loose, trying different things out, onside kick, recovered, they stole a possession. Um, they're playing free as Manchester. How do you keep that momentum up? in the second half knowing you haven't scored since the first quarter i think what they need to do coming out into the second half is uh forget about the first half honestly even though it was a good half and they're up and they have the first lead that they've had all season and you know they need to put it behind them though because they can't let themselves get too big of a head here and they need to uh, come out in the second half the same way they came out at the beginning of the game acting like it's zero zero uh playing loose and just having no worry in the world and that's what made them so good in the first half 21 to 17 is your score in favor of Manchester. Uh, Defiance will get the opening kickoff to start the second half, and, and really important for them to go on a long offensive drive. Their defense spent a lot of time on the football field in the first half. Yeah, it's probably they probably spent too much time on the field uh, in the first half, which has been their detriment. And they need to be able to find some rhythm outside of their running back. Um, Freeman because once he gets shut down it, it seems like they're pretty one dimensional Ambrose really hasn't found a consistent rhythm in his passing game yet but if he's able to their offense will be able to be balanced maybe get a little more time of possession to give their defense a, a rest. For those other college football fans out there that are watching this uh, IU 10 straight unanswered points in the fourth quarter to tie Penn State at 24 points a piece again you're watching the ACAC.TV on Indiana SRN. Tony Donahue, Peyton Brown with you. Big shout out to Greg Smith and Justin Griffiths for keeping us on the air and bringing you these beautiful pictures of a awesome fall day from Manchester University on Saturday afternoon. It is senior afternoon for the Manchester Spartan football program. We want to thank Officially Human. And we also want to thank today's officials for their dedication and hard work. Without them, we do not play you don't have something nice to say please don't say anything at all sportsmanship is everyone's job we'll look back at some other stats from the first half and get you teed off for the second half of play from manchester university where the home spartans lead defiance 21 to 17 we'll be back right after this the hcac.tv powered by indian srn at morales group staffing we are all about building better futures and during these times, we are working hard to put people to work. We are now hiring for hundreds of jobs with pay up to 17 an hour. Visit our website at moralesgroup.net or text JOBS, J-O-B-S, to 317-472-7600 to apply now and get hired today. Calling officials cheaters or corrupt, it's not a game. Insulting referees, it's not a game. Threatening officials, it's not a game. Berating young umpires, learning the ropes, it's not a game. Violent language in the stands, it's not a game. Verbal abuse from the sideline, it's not a game. Screaming at a referee in the parking lot, it's not a game. or moving project has arrived and college hunks hauling junk and moving has you covered honest 
Uniform. Nice. Knowledgeable. Service. Calling trunks, hauling junk, and moving. Back here from Manchester University, HCAC.TV, powered by Indiana SRN. We are at halftime. Manchester with a 21-17 to lead over Defiance. The only scoring in that second quarter was the eight-yard touchdown run for, excuse me, eight-yard touch touchdown pass, 21-17 to at halftime. Defiance uh, offense finally got things clicking there. They found their first completion midway through the second quarter. Uh, for, from them, Ambrose was, was clicking all the way down to the end zone to put seven up on the board. Yeah, and it, it's going to be important for them to build off of that. Anything that either one of these teams did well in the first half, they need to use it for momentum, and they need to use it to set up a balance. Like We've seen Defiance, they've been able to run the ball, pass the ball there at the end, which is good. They need to build on that in the second half, and Manchester as well needs to find you know, some kind of balance because they're pretty one-dimensional even though you have James being talented as he has been in this game but uh, you got to be able to run the ball and throw the ball. Tyshawn Freeman uh, good at getting yards after the the initial hit at six foot 237 uh, how do you wrap him up if you're Manchester they did a good job there in the second quarter of not allowing him to get those extra yards. Yeah if you're Manchester you need to figure out how to wrap both legs up because you can't hit him high because as we saw they'll bounce off of them and so they need to completely throw that idea out the window that they can just fly in and you know knock him over because he's got a great center of gravity great balance uh, great power in his legs but if you take anyone's knees out they're not going anywhere it it was one of my number one tactics that I used as a linebacker I mean I'm only 5'9 but I played middle linebacker so when I knew that I was playing a bigger running back I always went low, but I used going low on everybody. And you know how it's always said in football, low man wins. In that second quarter, Defiance with the football had seven first downs, eight receptions for 94 yards. Now keep in mind they did not complete a pass in the first quarter. Ambrose was 8 of 11, averaging five yards per play in that second quarter. That led to the touchdown. The missed field goal at the end of the half. But I cut this to a one-point game. Nonetheless, Manchester with a 21-17 lead. That second quarter, pretty even on the possession. 7-35 for Defiance. 7-16 for Manchester. You go back to that first quarter, and we kind of talked about this. 11 minutes, the defense for Defiance is on the football field. Yeah, and if uh, one or the other team can do that to the do that to each other they'll be able to I feel come out on top because the more tired your team is on either side of the ball the more of a detriment but I think you would rather have the other team's defense more tired than their offense because if their offense is getting tired that means they're out there and they're just they're bound to get in the end zone at some point but if it's their defense then they're they're just going to get frustrated being out there so you see lazy plays happen and you see uh, uh, lazy assignments missed so that I believe uh, needs to be a goal of both teams. Peyton, what do you want to see the tempo be for Manchester? It seemed like when they were going quick, no huddle, they were moving the sticks in the second quarter. They were up by 11 points. They seemed to slow things down a little bit. So did the offensive production. Do you want to see them continue that fast-paced offense? Manchester, I think, needs to go no huddle, and they need to just keep going, keep uh, pressing on the gas. Maybe towards the, I would say in the last eight minutes, maybe seven minutes of the game, you can think about possessing the ball, but until then, you need to just think about getting in the end zone. Who cares about possessing it for any uh, uh, amount of time if you don't capitalize? So I think they need to get on the ball. They need to get the get the play in, get the play out, and they need to execute at a fast pace every single play. You're not uh, you're not thinking a second onside kick attempt here, are you, if you're Manchester to start the half? I would do it to set the tone. I mean, what, it, what we talked about in the beginning, what do they got to lose? And uh, it worked once already. Yeah, and their defense has been great. If you, if you think about it, Manchester's defense – those 17 points were because of interceptions and giving them a short field. So shout out to the Spartans defense. They've done a great job of, of, of really keeping the offense at bay. I know that the receiving core got going there in the second quarter with 94 yards passing in the second quarter. But, but shout out to the Spartans defense. Yeah, their defense has been really, really showing up, and they've been very aggressive. And all season long, really, if you look at it, the Spartans defense hasn't been – 
terrible, and the scores may tell a different story, but it's because <laughs> they spent 11 minutes a quarter out on the field. So uh, uh, having a little bit of a break from their offense today has shown, again, like I've said, how good they can be uh, and are choosing to be today. 57-yard touchdown strike for Penn State. They lead IU. And this is going to be touched and skips back in bounds, but then will go out of bounds. That's one of those footballs, man, that's – you almost play this like on Madden, right? You throw it up there, you kick it up there, you hope you get a good bounce, and that's the second time that Manchester has had an opportunity to recover it. This time it goes out of bounds. And if uh, your defiance is coach, uh, special teams coordinator, you're talking to your play, catch the ball. Just catch the ball even if you uh, get tackled right away or if it's out of bounds. I wouldn't even let him just let try to let it go out of bounds because th that's a dangerous play right there. I mean, imagine if Manchester got it, they'd be sitting at the 30-yard line right now. Bad snap, skips around, safety, Penn State leads 33, excuse me, now 33-24 to 24 for those uh, trying to keep track of both games here with us on HCAC.TV as the first play of the second half goes for a pickup of three. So no abandons of the running game here, and I think we're going to see a lot of Freeman because he can certainly wear down a defense. Yeah, he, he is the threat uh, to Manchester's defense today because their defenders are just bouncing off of him. But if they can shut him down, then uh, they make this offense one-dimensional. So they'll move the sticks here on a first down. Defiance with the football opening possession of the first half. They're going to go a little bit of a tempo here, but again, Freeman – that big body at 237 pounds can certainly wear you down. Looks to pass. Left side has a man wide open, caught at the 45. Makes one man miss, tackled from behind. First down, a nice little pitch and catch there. Pickup of 18 yards. They find Gibson, the sophomore, on the pass play. And Gibson just sold the fader out so well there, and then he uh, stopped real quick, hit the brakes, and was able to uh, leave the corner in the dust there. Screen pass caught at the 40-yard line by Rome, and he's met immediately. Whistle blows. They'll hold up. Great sportsmanship there. They might get him. See if they see where they mark it here. I think it's back to the line of scrimmage, so no gain on the forward progress. So third, excuse me, third quarter, 13-25 to play, second and 10. Patient offensive set here to start the second half for Defiance. Ambrose takes the snap, steps up, d dumps it off, forward, caught by Freeman. Great hands there, the big man off for the races. Shimmy shakes down on the 20-yard line, so into the red zone goes Defiance on their opening possession here of the second half. And great play by Ambrose. He was getting some pressure, but he kept his eyes downfield, and you know, we've seen a lot of great plays from James doing that, but Ambrose keeps his eyes downfield, able to find Freeman in open space, wide open. So Ambrose looking to regain the lead for Defiance. They haven't led since it was 7-0. to zero. Nice little pitch and catch here, left side just short of the sticks. Mark him for a pickup of six. So a very efficient first two and a half Minutes to start the third quarter here for Defiance, really picking up where they left off on their last two drives of the second quarter. And I'm sure the coach uh, hit that on, uh, when they went in for halftime to use the momentum that they had from the end of the first half. Freeman, another run, pushes the pile forward enough for a first down inside the 10-yard line. It'll be first and goal coming up from the eight for Defiance. And at this point, I'd keep it in Freeman's hands. Yeah. I mean, you don't want to run into something like like uh, when you have a Marshawn Lynch type running back and you choose to throw it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it looks like they may be splitting them out wide, though. Yeah, we'll see what they do here. I'd be running them, but Ambrose alone in the backfield. And Freeman will come back and join him. And I think if, with your big back, you give it to him four times to get you eight yards into the end zone. I think he's going to be able to do it. Here's the handoff. Still churning those feet forward. He'll get it down to the two-yard line, so it'll be second and goal from the two on the pickup of six there by Freeman. Number zero, Freeman on the carry, brought down by number 99, Derek Cross. 
Manchester bringing in big bodies. That's a, I was just about to mention that again. And this will be a quarterback keeper. Ambrose is in. Standing up. Touchdown. And a quick drive to start the second half. Hands the lead back over to Defiance. 23-21 with the extra point pending. And he just took off there. It's on the, on the goal line. You can't catch any runners. You have to meet them right in the hole. And it looks like Manchester was uh, playing a little bit of catch him there. But uh, a great run by Ambrose to punch it in. Yeah, four first downs on this drive that started at the 38-yard line. And the extra point is up. And it is good. 11-15 to play in the third quarter. The fine strikes first in the second half. They lead 24-21. You're watching ACAC.TV, powered by Indian SRN. You're good at keeping the car clean. We're good at your insurance. Start with Indiana Farm Bureau Insurance, online, over the phone, or in person, and stop knocking on wood. So I stopped in at Chick-fil-A for lunch and saw Officer Wilson come in. I decided to place a dine-in mobile order and have a cookie delivered to him just to show appreciation for his service for our community. A few minutes later, I noticed that Officer Wilson had gotten up and left, and I knew he hadn't gotten his cookie yet. And I'm headed to my car. I turn around and I see Allie, and she's running after me. Mr. Police Officer, Mr. Police Officer. <laughs> Usually when someone yells, Officer, Officer, they want to it's a nine-play, 70-yard drive capped off by a two-yard touchdown run by the quarterback Jordan Ambrose. Puts Defiance back on top. The initial kickoff is blotched and then picked up by Manchester. So a nice differential of run and pass there on that first drive by Defiance, and they retake the lead 24-21, Peyton. Yeah, and that was just great uh, uh, by Defiance. and A little mixture of Ambrose uh, making plays through the air and Freeman obviously on the ground, but Ambrose capitalizing on the ground as well. And it'll be interesting to see if Manchester responds the same in the second half that they did in the first half to things not totally going their way. Yeah, it's 14 unanswered points for Defiance to retake the lead by a field goal. Manchester's first possession, second half. High snap, option, pitched right side, flag on the play, and it looks like it's either going to be an illegal motion or a false start on Manchester. We'll see what the official call is. So it'll be an illegal shift. So a five-yard penalty moves them back. It'll be a first and 15. Uh, but Manchester trying to throw some, some different offensive looks at this Defiance defense that, as we mentioned, uh, spent a full quarter on the field there in the first half. Yeah, and it'll be a, a huge for either one of them to uh, pull something like that off again to, like we've talked about, wear the other defense out. Clock runs under 11, third quarter. James keeps it under pressure, picked off. His fourth interception. The route was jumped on a slowly pouring thrown football, and it is picked off. And he just seemed to have panicked a little bit because of yeah. the pressure, and honestly, the sack mm. would have been better. Yeah, Tyquez Douglas with the interception, the fourth interception by this Defiance defense that sets up for a fourth time their offense inside of the 30-yard line, this one officially at the nine. And they'll be looking for their second touchdown here in the first five or so minutes of the second half. Ambrose, shotgun snap, looks left, pumps, floats it, up for grabs, overthrown, incomplete, second and 10 to come from the 14-yard line. Again, 
a Manchester team that, that showed plenty of spark, plenty of flash in this first quarter. And as great as James has been throwing three touchdowns, having a couple quick strikes, four interceptions, it's going to be hard for any football team to come back from. Four interceptions is detrimental. And as we've seen, Defiance has really only put together one really good offensive drive, and it was their first drive of the second half. All of their other points and drives, it seems like, have come off of picks that uh, uh, they get inside the red zone. So see what they do here, second and ten. Ambrose fakes the handoff. Has the screen, dumps forward, caught by Freeman. Freeman, the big man, drags the defender down to the five-yard line, so a third and sh short coming up here. And he drug him three yards <laughs> before he finally came down, and he fell forward. And uh, if I'm their coach, I'm just giving it to him at this point because they're close enough. 24-21, your score, five minutes gone by, third quarter. It's a third and short. Play clock running down. Freeman in the backfield. Ambrose three to his left. Looks right. Quick dump off. Caught. And a great tackle there to stop Freeman from getting into the end zone. But it is enough for a first down. So first and goal on the quick pitch and catch there inside the two-yard line. And it was a great tackle there by the defender as well. He did exactly what they needed to do the entire game to stop somebody like Freeman. But uh, now I wouldn't throw it to Freeman. I'd just hand it to him and let him let him eat. Let him do his, uh, his magic. Great hands, too, by the big man. He's got two catches in this third quarter. And we'll see if he got in there. And he does. So just like as you mentioned, Freeman runs it up the middle for a touchdown. That's two quick touchdowns in the first six minutes and 49 seconds of the third quarter. And, again, you're just going to lower your shoulder, get a push from your quarterback, and into the end zone you go. And it was a no-brainer there on the three-yard line with the back like, uh, uh, like Freeman. You give it to him every single time. Extra point pending to put Defiance up by 10. This will be their largest lead of the afternoon. Snap, ball down, kick up, and good. 9-11 to play, third quarter. Defiance has scored 21 unanswered. They lead Manchester 31-21. You're watching HCAC.TV, powered by Indiana SRN. Keith Myers, Vice President of Indiana SRN. Thanks for joining us. You know Indiana SRN broadcasts 350 games a year. All sorts of sports. Yeah, we do. Hard to believe, isn't it? Indiana SRN loves to put student athletes first on our website. If you're a business out there, we probably could help you too. Contact us at coach at indianasrn.org. Grandma from out of state thanks you. Mom and dad who can't get to the game thanks you as well. In fact, our athletes watch the games over and over again. Our military has enjoyed the games as well. So sit back and enjoy the game. It's Indiana SRN. We're back here. The HCHC.TV powered by Indiana SRN. The ensuing kickoff fielded by Manchester tackled at the 29-yard line in defiance here. Lately, Peyton flexing their muscle. 21 unanswered, 14 quick points here in the third quarter. They've taken control of this contest. And uh, they really built off the momentum from the end of the uh, first half, as we've seen. They just uh, kept to keep rolling and stick to what's working, which is get the ball in Freeman's hands, but also balance it with Ambrose, maybe finding some openings in the passing game and also taking off himself. As we've seen, he's a mobile quarterback as well. But Manchester, they need... Uh, to figure out how to uh, find a rhythm again. And it looks like they have a quarterback change. Yep, we're going to have a quarterback's change here. Three touchdowns, four interceptions for the senior, Eric James. Shotgun snap, right side under pressure. And tackle in the backfield, I believe. The new quarterback is number 14, Dante Cheney, who started last week. So Cheney comes into the game. Trailing 31 to 21. 
Not an awful day for Eric James coming in on senior day. He throws those three touchdowns, but as we mentioned, four interceptions, it's hard to come back from. Yeah, exactly, and I think that's probably the reason they made a quarterback change is because they can't afford to have any more interceptions, especially now down 10. Uh, but uh, they got to figure out what's going on on the right side of the offensive line. It's been a problem the entire game. So Cheney takes the snap. Quick pass. Caught. Momentum spin towards about the 30-yard line. Nice little pitch and catch there. Jordan Barnett with his fifth catch of the afternoon. And Barnett's made a lot of noise today with the two touchdown catches, obviously. And, you know, any time that he can get the ball in, it, in his hands, it seems like he does something well with it. But um, uh, it'll be, in, in my eyes, I'd probably throw it up to him if it seems like an option here. But if they put that safety over top of him, he'll be probably not open. Yeah, it's a third and long coming up here. Dante Cheney, the six-foot junior quarterback. With possession of the football. Steps up in the pocket. Breaks out of one tackle. He's off to the races. Uses his feet to get across to the 35. Mark him just shy of the first down marker. It'll be a fourth down and four. The book probably says to punt it here. Uh, but trailing by 10, and they will punt. Try to pin him deep here. You're going to need a boomer to get it inside of the red, to, to get him inside the 20. Extra blocker checking in. The boot will come from about the 25 yard line. Defiance showing blitz. And Manchester will take a timeout. So a fourth and four timeout for the Spartans of Manchester. Uh, do, are you thinking about maybe going for it here? Or did you not like the the blitz that Defiance showed? Um, you don't. You, you certainly don't want to burn a timeout halfway through the third quarter. But indeed, they do. Maybe think about going for it here on fourth and four. In my eyes, this is a tough decision, but I would because Defiance, I think, has too much momentum right yeah. now to give them the ball back. They've been able to really do what they want to on the offensive side this half, especially. And to just give the ball back, I don't, I don't think. I mean, I would trust my defense enough to make a stand if you don't get it, because you're almost to the 40-yard line, so they have a little ways to go. But at the same time, it's it's a tough call here because there is a lot of time left. Yep. We'll see what they do. Again, Dante Cheney, who is the backup quarterback, is now checked into the game as starter Eric James on senior night. Has been sent to the bench. And it's been a little bit of an extended timeout here. I only got 10 guys out there. So they're going to probably, I mean, there you go, get an extra player out there. So watch for the up back here. Cameron Hovey is in there. Maybe a lineup for an extra blocker. Could we see a fake from the 35? No hard count. Runs up, and it's blocked. It is picked up at the 40-yard line and then returned off the block to the 30. And a turnover there after the blocked punt. And Defiance will have it at the 30-yard line looking to put this one away with a 10-point lead. They've already scored 21 unanswered, 14 of those coming here in the third quarter. And see, they bring in the extra blockers, but it, it didn't do enough, which is why at this point you never know what's going to happen. Yeah. So it, going for it should not be out of the question because that that essentially was going for it and getting sacked, but um, definitely not what you want. Yeah, that's tough. Uh, obviously, hindsight's twenty twenty. You say, hey, it was blocked. We should have went for it. Makes sense. But I don't – you know, fourth and four, I'd rather throw – my offense out there say I got confidence in you you know we're only a sc one score and we're right back in this thing nonetheless you give it right back to defiance with short field Ambrose going to make you pay for it cuts it back first down to the 15 yard line and, and like you mentioned you got to be able to stop momentum and, and and defiance certainly has that right now and possibly going for it on fourth and four you get it maybe changes that momentum a little bit uh, but nonetheless the punt gets blocked and the momentum stays on the side 
of the Yellow Jackets. Ambrose throws to the end zone up for grabs. Touchdown, Defiance. A nice pitch and catch there. Aiden Hurst with the touchdown catch. And it's 37 to 21 in favor of Defiance. And Ambrose just puts that ball right where only he can catch it. And you know, the defender didn't really have anything going for him with not turning his head around. But again, it's the momentum. They, uh, the Defiance fought to stop Manchester's momentum and they succeeded at it. But Manchester, you, you cannot just choose to give the ball back to a team especially on a fourth down that is manageable, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and then watch him march uh, down and score again. This was a 21-10 game in the second quarter, and it's been 28 unanswered for Defiance with 6-17 to play in the third quarter. The Yellow Jackets strike again. They lead 38-21 to over Manchester. You're watching HCAC.TV, powered by Indian SRN. At Morales Group Staffing, we are all about building better futures. And during these times, we are working hard to put people to work. We are now hiring for hundreds of jobs with pay up to 17 an hour. Visit our website at moralesgroup.net or text JOBS, J-O-B-S, to 317-472-7600 to apply now and get hired today. We encourage you to follow us on Twitter at Indiana SRN. Find upcoming games, video highlights, and much more. Follow us now at Indiana SRN. We are back. The ensuing kickoff after Defiance uses the block punt for a touchdown on two plays, finding the end zone on the touchdown strike. Some of the bench players coming in for Manchester on the return. He will be stopped at the 20 and pushed back to the 15. So 6.07 to play, third quarter. It's been all defiant since halfway through that second quarter. Yeah, it has. And that return there, that uh, that is definitely not what you want because he just absorbed the hit, really. Um, and in football, it's either you're hit or you're getting hit. Yep. And so Defiance obviously wanted to hit there. But uh, this uh, Spartan team needs to find a spark somewhere in. It looks like James is coming back in, actually. So they will bring back in the original starting quarterback, Eric James, the 5'11 senior with three touchdown passes, but four interceptions here on the afternoon so far. Trailing 38-21. Quick handoff, left side, spins out of it, and he's going to be hammered to the ground. So a nice tackle there by Thomas Coltrane. That's a defensive player we've called his name all afternoon. Yeah, he's been all over the field. He's filled the gaps extremely quick. He's been right where he's needed to be uh, in the run game. He's, he's really been one of uh, the players here today that have uh, made Manchester's run game next to impossible seemingly on some plays and if I'm Manchester I mean at this point you got to air it out you got to choose to air it out especially with James in there so second and 10 trailing by 17 James steps up fires quick pass and it is almost picked off through the hands of the defender and that would have been Harris's second pick of the afternoon falls of the turf for a third down upcoming and five interceptions that wouldn't have <laughs> In, in the red zone, too, that wouldn't have uh, uh, been good at all there. Um, he just needs he needs to do what he's done well all game and step up confident in the pocket, plant his feet, and throw it. So third and ten. James looks left, right side, fires it, has a man, and it is defended over the top by Jalen Red and incomplete to set up a three and out, and Manchester will be forced to punt. The momentum that Manchester built in getting to that 21-10 lead has gone to the wayside. We'll see if they decide to go for this one now on 4th and 10 after they didn't go for it on 4th and 4. And I think they're thinking at this point if they're going to give the ball back, yeah, they might as well take four chances to get those 10 yards. Yeah, it could be a pooch punt here, and it will be. 
decent hang time. Take a nice little bounce. And the fourth possession of the third quarter for Defiance will start from the 48-yard line with a 38-21 to 21 lead. And we talked about if this was going to go Manchester's way, they're going to need some balls to bounce their way. It looks like they're going to mark him at the 48 here. So he did touch it there. So, yeah, at the 48-yard line. Um, the defense has been on the field for pretty much the entire third quarter. If Manchester has any hope of coming back, they're going to need to get off the field on a, on a quick three and out here or possibly a turnover. And this has been the detriment to them all season, really. They they get to a certain point in the game where their defense is just out there way too much, and, and they're put in unfortunate situations because their offense isn't able to capitalize. And uh, if they're not careful, they're going to fall into the same trap they've seen all season. The first down throw, Ambrose into double coverage, and it's going to – be slightly overthrown, incomplete, second down and 10 with Gibson, your intended target there, taking a shot on first and 10, does defiance. And I wonder if he lost it in the lighter. It looked like it was just an arm length, arm's length out regardless. It was a little overthrown there. But, uh, I mean, the shot on the first down, that, that sets anything up here uh, out uh, from their playbook here on second down. So five minutes to play, third quarter. Man in motion. Rolls out right side. Ambrose dumps it forward. Caught. First down. Cuts back in. Stays in bounds. Down on the 30-yard line. A nice little pitch and catch there on second down to move the sticks. That's Rome's second reception of the afternoon. In defiance, finding that rhythm there in the pass game still, uh, is it's going to be dangerous towards uh, Manchester because we already know how Freeman can run the ball. So first and 10, clock moving, 4.35 to go. Third quarter, Ambrose looks deep, thinks twice about it, tucks it back, tries to motion a man, lowers his shoulder, stays inbounds. Clock continues to run here in the third quarter as Defiance will look for another first down. They'll set up a second down and six. And something that we're seeing here on the field uh, with Manchester, obviously their defense is getting tired, but something that they're going to have to quickly shift their mind away from is their, their energy that we saw in the first quarter is no longer there, mm -hmm. and they have to find it because Defiance has that urgency right now that's going to carry them through their drives, but Manchester, it's their energy. Ambrose, quarterback keeper, man in front, tries to get a few blocks, does not. Forward progress will mark him at the 15-yard line, so it'll be a third down and five here for Defiance. Uh, more than likely... Uh, in four-down territory, this would be a 43, 44-yard field goal from here. They missed one, remember, going into halftime from right around the same distance. And if they don't convert here, I'd suspect that it's four-down territory because of that. I think both sides are realizing some things that don't really work, which is why Manchester pooch punted instead of actually punting since they had it blocked. But I would suspect that Defiance would use the same strategy and go for it instead of kicking. Out of shotgun, third and five. Ambrose steps up, fires to the end zone, has a man wide open. Did he catch it? He did. What a touchdown snag there by Gibson. And what a catch there. He may have left his feet a little early, which is why it didn't come down completely clean. But regardless, you see him just wide open in the middle of the field running there, and he's able to jump up and – Bobbled a little bit and hang on to it, though. Secures the touchdown grab, and it is 35 unanswered points by Defiance, who trailed 21-17 to at halftime. Four touchdowns, four possessions here in the third quarter. Extra point is no good, and with 3.08 to play in the third quarter, it's been all Defiance in this second half. They lead 44-21. to you're watching HCAC.TV, powered by Indiana SRN.
can't get to a computer? Then we've got you covered. Just go to the Indiana SRN app and stay up to date with all of your favorite teams. You can watch live coverage or relive the experience with our on-demand service. Back here from Manchester College, the Defiance Yellow Jackets, 35 unanswered. Manchester University with the return to the 20-yard line. So what can Manchester do here? The offense hasn't been there in the third quarter. Their defense has been on the field for most of this third quarter. Uh, you certainly got to move the sticks. How do they do it? I think something that Manchester needs to do, the main thing is they need to just, like we talked about at halftime, they need to forget about everything that's happened in the past. They need to have a short memory because I think having a lead maybe, I don't know, I could be wrong here, put a big head on them there for a second. Uh, uh, and as before at the beginning of the game, they didn't even care. They were just mm -hmm. playing free. But then they started thinking, oh, we're going to get that first win, first win, and they started overthinking some things which is put him behind now. So Manchester with the football, fakes the handoff, screen pass complete. It's going to go for a loss of about one. The forward progress will mark him at the 20-yard line with 2.51 to play in this third quarter. And back into the contest is Eric James for the second possession of the third quarter. So Spartans with the ball trailing 44-21. to 21. 34 unanswered for Defiance. Quick handoff. It's past the line of scrimmage. Tackled hard from behind. They're going to mark him at the 26-yard line. So a third and short coming up here. And, and as we kind of found out in the last possession, uh, Van Hunt going to go for it on fourth down. Fourth down territory from here on out. Looks like someone got injured there. So we have a defiance player down. But they definitely are in four down territory at this point, it, at anywhere on the field. At this point in the game, I mean, you're down 23 points, uh, 17 minutes left, and hard telling how much of that is going to be defiance on offense. So you need to really, really – um, take advantage of any time you have the ball and honestly take any risk that uh, you see. We want to thank Piper Logistics. They specialize in everything from warehousing to transportation and everything in between. Three services, one solution. We do it all. Further information, 317-393-1023. Hey, don't miss this chance to be part of the excitement and leave a lasting impression as an Indiana SRN game day sponsor. Join us and let's create unforgettable game days together coach at indianasrn.org. We want to thank everybody from Manchester University and everybody at the HCHC Conference for organizing today's broadcast from Jerry Collins to Keith Myers, Tony Donahue, Peyton Brown with you here. It is senior day, a lot that went well in that first half, but here with 2.07 to go in the third quarter, a third and four coming up. Looks like we're going to return to action here as the Spartans of Manchester University. We'll look to continue this drive with a third and four on the 26. Out of shotgun comes James. Quick handoff. Burst of speed there from Jalen Love, and it's enough for the first down. Yeah, now they need to, I would say they need to just stay quick up to the ball, no huddle. They need to run plays, and they need to wear out Defiance's defense because if they're not going to have the ball that long, um, they need to go ahead and uh, just be quick and urgent with what they're doing to wear them out in a short amount of time. Yeah, and, uh, and it looks like they're not showing much sense of urgency here. It's almost like, hey, let's just see what we can come up with over this next uh, quarter and change with a minute 28 to go here in the third quarter. Shotgun snap, James dumps off the screen incomplete. And it'll be a second down and 10 coming up for the Spartans. And uh, if he wasn't, <laughs> he's, he got a little lucky there because the corner 
was right near that ball. It was a little dangerous. If it was a little more in front of that running back, the the uh, defines the Yellow Jackets would be uh, running with a pick six right now. Yeah, and there's a, a lot of big boys on that defensive push there from the Defiance Yellow Jackets. Uh, Fernando Nieves at 5'9", 330. Big number 99, we see him in there right now on a second down and 10. Handoff, back to the line of scrimmage. Shimmy shakes, stays on his feet. And Love will get a pickup of about two yards there. It'll be a third and eight coming up. Four down territory, obviously, from here on out. And uh, they need to, I feel like they need it. They need to find their rhythm back again in the pass game. I mean, it's good to establish the run here towards the end of the game, but I would say it would have been better at the beginning of the game, you know, because it, the clock is not your friend right now. And, I mean, you have 30, 40 seconds run off at a time before you run the next play. So third and eight, under 30 to play. Third quarter, this one's batted around and almost picked off. Coltrane jumped the route, as did Vashawn Palmer, and it goes incomplete, so a fourth and eight coming up. And the ball looked pretty coming out, but, I mean, it, he, he, I don't know what you expect when it gets thrown into triple coverage. You know, it's I know he's going after his favorite target here, but um, they need to be able to – have other people that can get as open or maybe uh, a little open that he can utilize. So fourth and eight, 29 seconds to go. Out of shotgun. And it looks, we might see a little pooch punt here again. We will. This one takes a bounce at about the 35 and rolls down. We'll get it inside the 20-yard line. We, we'll mark it right at the 20. So a nice little punt there to flip the field position. And Defiance, who has scored four times in this third quarter, will take over from the 20-yard line with a 44-21 lead, 16 and a half seconds to play third quarter. And at this point, I wouldn't be surprised if Defiance maybe tries to possess the ball. Uh, maybe this drive they'll uh, push to get another touchdown on the board. But next drive, I wouldn't be surprised um, if they choose to uh, uh, just possess the ball and uh, get out of here with the win. So we'll see. Starter still in. Ambrose in the backfield. Man in motion. 16 seconds. Here's the handoff. Keeps the legs churning there for Young. His first rush of the afternoon. And just like that, we've reached the end of the third quarter. It has been all defiance. 27 unanswered points in the third quarter. They take a 44-21 advantage into the fourth quarter of play. You're watching HCAC.TV, powered by Indiana SRN. Calling officials cheaters or corrupt, it's not a game. Insulting referees, it's not a game. Threatening officials, it's not a game. Berating young umpires, learning the ropes, it's not a game. Violent language in the stands, it's not a game. Verbal abuse from the sideline, it's not a game. Screaming at a referee in the parking lot, it's not a game. We are back here from Marion, excuse me, Manchester University. Defiance with a 44-21 lead, HCAC.TV on Indiana SRN. Quick play action throw right side, caught down the, oh, it's down the sideline. And at the last second, a great job there by Victorino to put his hand in between the football in the hands of the intended target, and it draws an incomplete pass for a second and two coming up, 14.53 left in the fourth quarter. When you go to the locker room on senior night, 
if you're a Manchester player, there's a lot that went well today, a lot that didn't go well today. Um, if you're a senior, what's going to be your message to some of these younger classmen for next season, knowing that there are a, a dominant amount of freshmen and sophomores on this Manchester roster? I think a message uh, that they could be sending them is, you know, keep your head up and uh, keep working because as a younger player, it can be very discouraging to go into, you know, obviously as a freshman and sophomore, your first or second year at a new place, you know, you're away from home, mm -hmm. moving out, all this, so it's all new. It can be discouraging to feel like you went for something that maybe you feel in the moment isn't worth it, but as a senior, giving them the advice of keep working and turn this thing around, be the change. I think could be something huge for them. Fourth and one. Defiance will go for it. Quarterback keeper. Quick pass. Caught. And barely enough for the first down. And I don't think this is simply, uh, you know, going for it on fourth and one to show up Manchester. I think this is Defiance saying, hey, we don't get these opportunities that often. Let's see if we can get this play to work. Exactly. And I think it's also them just uh, uh, trying to honestly get this clock going and keep it going and keep the ball in their hands. So 14 minutes to play in this one. Play action. Ambrose down the sideline, one-on-one, -on -one separation, and what a catch downfield made by Charles Hollinsworth, the freshman. And uh, Hollinsworth, he, he made up for his drop that he had just a few plays mm -hmm. ago, and uh, he, he, he wanted the redemption there, you could tell. They went right back to it. And this one goes for a nice completion. And it isn't even bad coverage either. Mm -hmm. He just he made a phenomenal play there on the ball. 26-yard pickup. Handoff to Jacob Diesler, the freshman out of Detroit, Michigan, getting some time here in the fourth quarter of a 44-21 game. Ambrose waits for the signal using all the play clock. Ambrose looks right, throws, has a man caught at the 20. Whoa, shimmy shake. Makes one man miss. Another ball loose on the ground. And Defiance will pick it up. So the little juke move gets him free. A spin move gets it free. Then he gets his face mask ripped off, fumbles the football. But Defiance maintains it. And what a move he made here. He was able to stop on a dime and make this guy miss. A little Chris it. Boomer. Whoop! <laughs> And then, and right here, ball's loose. We have an injury with a Manchester player down. And let's take a timeout with them. 12.57 to play in this contest. All defiance in the second half. They lead 44-21. to You're watching HCAC.TV, powered by Indiana SRN. From warehousing to transportation and everything in between, Piper Logistics does it all. Centrally located, Piper Logistics has two warehouses in Indianapolis and a warehouse in Cincinnati, Ohio. Piper Logistics houses over 1 million square feet. Along with our transportation department, we can provide service to half the United States markets. Big first and goal coming up here after the completion. Back-to-back -back completions for a total of 62 yards so far on this drive. Here's the quick handoff. They try to jump over the pile, and Young will be stopped short. The freshman running back looking to find the end zone for the third time this season. Stopped short there, so second and goal coming up. We have another defiance player down. Looks like it's just a shoe tie. 12.35 to go. And it looks like they brought all their big dudes in. Oh. And we have a Manchester player down. Timeout for a defensive injury. We shall keep it right here. We want to thank the Morales Group. Building better futures one story at a time. They have locations in Indy, Zionsville, Anderson, Columbus, and Lafayette. For more information, 317-472-7600. Hey, don't forget to... Visit heartlandconf.org. Keep up to date with every school and every sport on the HCAC website, heartlandconf.org. Don't forget the HCAC Commissioner's Cup. It's a rotating trophy awarded to the institution that garners the most overall all-sports points. 
Congratulations to Rose Holman, the 2022-2023 winner of the HCAC Commissioner's Cup. Gain prominent exposure through on-site branding, social media mentions, and more. Contact us today to sponsor Indiana SRN. It's coach at indianasrn.org. All right, Peyton, you've been in these games. You've been on both sides. you got a big lead in the fourth. You got, you, you've been down in the fourth quarter. But uh, how important to keep your composure here knowing there's two more games left? It's extremely important because, especially as a senior, I'm sure they're they're frustrated that they're losing on senior day. But you got to understand, you still got a few games left in your season, and uh, uh, just to keep it cool because the outcome is the outcome at this point, and um, uh, they need to accept it for where they are right now. Quick run here by Freeman, stops short of the end zone, so it'll be a second and goal coming up. Third and goal. So third and goal, the old tush push coming. Handoff and the big man for the third time. Tyshawn Freeman into the end zone for the touchdown. And it is 50 to 21 defiance. And he just walks in there too. Yeah, the, I mean, with that size, as you mentioned, Jerome Bettis down at the down at the goal line. He's gonna punch in for you probably ten out of ten times there. Yeah, there's there's uh there's no stopping that at you're just trying to make a fight at that point. So the extra point will make this a thirty point differential. Forty one unanswered from Defiance. Extra point is up and it is good. With eleven forty to go, Defiance strikes again. They lead Manchester fifty one to twenty one. You're watching HCAC.TV, powered by Indiana SRN. All defiance here in the second half. The Yellow Jackets with a 51-21 lead over Manchester. They trail 21-10 halfway through the second quarter. Since then, 41 unanswered with 11.40 remaining. Defiance leading Manchester 51-21. The HCAC.TV powered by Indiana SRN. Tony Donahue alongside Peyton Brown. You know, we, we, we talked about going into this game with, with Manchester at 0-7, and you kind of got to throw the records out and just focus on the next play. You got a, you got almost a full quarter here. Uh, we're going to be probably impossible to come back, but focusing on each play and trying to get some some plays downfield, I think it should be the mindset here for Manchester. I think their mindset should be that, and just and just focusing on you know one play at a time, one drive at a time, putting something together to uh, be proud of for finishing strong. Yeah, and Manchester going to likely get some good field position here after two unsportsmanlike conduct penalties on Defiance. So Defiance will have to – so the second will be half the distance. So Defiance will kick this bad boy from the 10-yard line. So if I'm Manchester, I mean, you're, you you got, you got a good chance to get the ball here in plus territory. Send the senior out there, James, around, see if he can throw the football around just like he did in the first quarter. This drive should almost be a guaranteed touchdown, you think. Yeah. Certainly going to start with good field position. Here's the kick, a little squibber. Bounce on the ground, hit hard. He got ran over, and defiance. Recovers it. Unfortunate for Peyton Fry. He got absolutely lit up. He's still down. And that's a tough one uh, if you're Manchester. 
A little insult to injury here. How do you look at that, Peyton? Uh, going for it, up 30. Maybe you're trying something at the 10 to see if it works for next week, but but that's a that that that's a tough one to not look across the sideline if you're Manchester and say, eh, it's a little little bit of a little bit of a dirty play call there to go for the the, the on. I mean, I guess it wasn't an onside kick; it was just a little pooch to the right side. But it was certainly a short kick. Yeah, it, it certainly was. It was an interesting call. I mean, I'll, I'll say that at least uh, when you're up 30. I mean. Um, um, Typically, you want to win and lose with class, but maybe they're just trying to uh, end this game and possess the ball and, and get out of here. But uh, uh, regardless, I didn't see that coming. But, I mean, great effort by them to get the ball back. So, Fry is still down. We will take a break with 11.37 to go in the fourth quarter. 51-21 Defiance, HCAC.TV, powered by Indian SRN. You're good at making big announcements. We're having a go! <laughs> We're good at your insurance. Start with Indiana Farm Bureau Insurance, online, over the phone, or in person, and stop knocking on wood. We encourage you to follow us on Twitter, at Indiana SRN. Find upcoming games, video highlights, and much more. Follow us now at Indiana SRN. We encourage you to follow us on Twitter at Indiana SRN. Find upcoming games, video highlights, and much more. Follow us now at Indiana SRN. After the injury on the ensuing squib kick that was recovered by Defiance, they retake back over on offense, leading 51-21. Tony Donahue, Peyton Brown with you. And the offense takes back to the field here for Defiance. Quick handoff here, right side. It'll go for not, so the ball will stay at the 31-yard line. Again, some questionable play calling here up 30 by Defiance. And I wonder if they'll uh, keep it on the ground or maybe try to go back to the air. Ambrose out of shotgun. Delayed draw. Back to the line of scrimmage is the freshman out of Newport, Arkansas, Christopher Young. It'll be a third down and long coming up for Manchester. And if you're up this big, do you run it to keep the clock going or do you try to convert? Yeah, I mean, honestly, I'm shocked that some of the starters are still in here. Ambrose takes a hit here and a hard hit. And then this is 15's down. 15's back up after the hard hit there. James Hubbard, the linebacker. That'll force a punt. Now you go back to that kick. It was it was recovered by Defiance up 30. The up back for Manchester gets 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 leveled pretty good. Uh, Manchester gets the gets the three and out here, but doing a great job of showing sportsmanship here is Manchester of of not losing your cool, not making late hits or dirty hits, and we'll see they'll get the football back here on offense and maybe maybe salvage something here in the fourth quarter. High snap, fielded, booted in the air. Takes a few bounces. It'll take a Manchester hop to the 48-yard line, and that's where they will start this offensive possession. And it was really good by Manchester there. I mean, you could obviously see how they, they would get frustrated, like especially the seniors on the field. Like yeah. you, You're up in, on your senior day game. You know, you, you have some hope. Then you all of a sudden fall down big, and then all of a sudden you have a team on side it, uh, on you when, when they're up 30. I mean, you're – Probably natural human reaction is to, you know, uh, uh, cause some kind of ruckus at the end of a play, but a great job by them keeping their cool with that. 
So first and 10, 9.36 to play in this one. Defiance with a 51-21 lead over Manchester. Delayed handoff, left side, gets the edge to the 50 to the 48-yard line into plus territory. Goes Manchester on the first down run. And I think at this point in the game, you know, I was I was going to say that I'm surprised they're not going to the air, mm -hmm. you know, right away. But I, I think at this point they're just trying to put together a good drive because they haven't really had one, you know, since since uh, they were able to score in the first quarter. And uh, being able to come out on top with, you know, all phases hitting on a drive, I think is their goal here. Man in motion, second and five through the air. And a little bit of of a collision balls overthrown almost intercepted falls harmlessly to the turf for an incompletion so a third and five coming up under nine to play in the fourth quarter expect to see if defiance takes the ball back their their offensive starters or you call it a day up 51 21 well i mean if i'm coaching it, it's time for my backups to be in but yeah. you, you you never know it uh uh, I would have suspected they'd already be out once you go up 30. I mean, it's it's time to just get your backups in, get them some reps, and uh, try to run the – I'd try to run the clock out, you know, put the game away, but I guess we'll see. Third and five, handoff. Extra effort gets two, and it'll be a fourth down and three coming up for Manchester University with 8.42 to go in the fourth quarter. And obviously four down territory here, I mean – Maybe try to find something short, something quick. I'm going to line up and do a hard count, maybe get that first down the cheap way. But we could also see a pooch punch, pooch punt here, which Brown has done uh, on several occasions here in this contest. Yep, I'll take a couple steps back. There's the snap, and I'll simply boot it away. Let's see if he can get himself one pin down around the goal line. He will. Great punt here. And that's where Defiance will take over from the 10-yard line. We'll take a quick break here. 51-21, 8.03 to play in this contest. Defiance with the lead. You're watching ACAC.TV on Indiana SRN. Hey, keep up to date with every school and every sport on the HCAC website, heartlandconf.org. Gain prominent exposure through on-site branding, social media mentions, and more. Contact us today for sponsorship opportunities. Coach at indianasrn.org. Tony Donahue, Peyton Brown with you, 51-21. Defiance with the lead, 7.42 to go. And as mentioned, the backups will check in here for Defiance, so... The second string getting some action here late in this contest. Shotgun snap. Quarterback keeper passes the 20-yard line. Spins out of another one to the 22-yard line. So a nice pickup there for the first down from the backup quarterback. That is Aiden Hurst, the sophomore from Corona, California and Snow College. And it looks like they're going to get what they want with the clock just ticking here. So first and ten. Clock still ticks. Seven minutes to go. And defiance with the football on a 30-point advantage. And a delay a game. Lots of clock coming off there on the delay of game and just obviously a miscommunication between the backup quarterback who just checked in and the coaching staff. So first and 15. Quarterback keeper here the entire way. Gets past the 25 to the 30. 
He's going to be marked out of bounds, just short of the sticks. So I pick up a 14. We'll set up second down and one. And I'm surprised as the quarter. I, I, would, I wouldn't see a point in going out of bounds right now. Yeah. Trying to stay in bounds, keep things in front of you. So second and one. Here's the handoff left side, a burst of speed, makes one man miss, cuts back, dives forward for a pickup of about 12. So Malcolm McNeil with his first run of the day, good for a first down. And there did seem to be some extra stuff going on at the end of the play. Yeah, there's been some jawing. Again, down 30. This will mark him back to the 25-yard line after a pickup of 17. Defiance with the ball. Quick screen pass caught to the 25. Takes a pass to the 30, to the 40. And enough for the first down there, so a nice pitch and catch. And that one hauled in by Cooper Sloan, his first catch of the afternoon. He's on the board with a 14-yard pickup. And I think we'll see probably a lot more running now here as they're about to go under five minutes. Man in motion. Quarterback keeper the entire way. Fumble, ball on the ground. And I believe it is recovered by Manchester. So a turnover here, playing all the way through the end of the fourth quarter. Manchester comes up with the strip on the fumble, recovered, and their offense will take over from the 48-yard line. And you got to respect the fight out of them. You know, it's easy to not want to be out there when you're down 30 points. But as a defense, I mean, choosing to keep going and, you know, get the ball back uh, for your offense is, is the way to finish. So the offense will take over. An up and down day for Eric James. Four interceptions, but three touchdowns. And I think you're going, look, a better feeling going into the locker room at the end of this one on senior day with maybe our senior tossing one more touchdown pass. Man in motion. Hand off right side. And goes nowhere. So Cameron Hovey. Loses one on the run. Yeah, I mean, at this point, you know, like I said last drive, I, I understand trying to hit on all phases. But, I mean, I feel like for your seniors, you know, you want to go out the right way. And, you know, so I would think you would want to air it out a little bit to try to get a touchdown too. Milking the clock here is the offense of Manchester with the senior Eric James in his last home game on the field. Three-step drop, batted down at the line of scrimmage and almost intercepted. It falls incomplete. And a nice job there by Andre Tibbs to get his mitts up and bat that one down for an incompletion. And again, his right side of his offensive line collapsed, just like they have been all day today, unfortunately. But uh, Quick screen pass caught, wide open, knee down. Let's see if we give him enough for a first down. And it is enough for a first down there. So a nice little pitch and catch to move the sticks here with 4-11 to play.
341 to play. James out of the gun. Screen pass caught at the 40 and can't shake out of the tackler. And they'll mark him down at the 40-yard line. And at this point, I think when you catch the ball, you just need to get upfield. I mean, you know, I understand trying to make moves and everything, but getting upfield so you're not losing any yards here in this game. Shotgun snap going to the end zone. James in the air. And just a bit behind his intended target. Incomplete, so a third and 14. But nice, we got a flag on the far side of the field. It's going to be an ineligible man downfield. And I think the guard wanted to run her out for him. <laughs> Wants to get on the action a little bit. Third and 14 coming up for Manchester. Trailing 51 21, 304 to go. Maybe another shot to the end zone here. I think something like that, or again, middle of the field is wide open. Not a shotgun, looks to the right side, double pumps. Fires it across the middle, floats it in there, caught enough for the first down. It's Brett Woolsey with his first catch of the day. And just what a throw by James again. Like we've talked about, when he is able to step into his throws, he's, he's able to uh, work some magic here, and uh, maybe they'll be able to uh, cap off their senior day with a touchdown to end the game here. Delayed draw, handoff, spins forward, passes the 15-yard line to the 13-yard line. So a pick up about six on first down, 228 to play. Defiance going to move to even on the season at four and four, and three and two in HCAC play. Second and three, man in motion. James, screen. Caught, 15, can't get out of the tacklers as Defiance was there to swarm them. The Yellow Jackets. So third and four, obviously four down territory here. Yeah. No hurry on the offensive side here for Manchester. It seems that they're probably wanting to have the ball when the last seconds uh, happen here. See what they decide to do here. James finds a man across the middle, caught. To number 11. I believe Jalen Grimes. And that is enough for a this is the first down, and as you mentioned, I think you just try to run it here four times in a row. If you get it in, you get it in. If not, time expires. And I would be surprised, obviously, they don't want Defiance to have the ball again. So 55 seconds remaining. First and goal from the 10. Wide open and into the end zone, untouched. Goes Josiah and Serena Smith, the sophomore, with the touchdown. And it's 51 to 27. They punched in from 10 yards out. And he just found that hole and he exploded. You know, his speed got him to the end zone there. And uh, way to finish strong for yeah. Manchester. Going down big, not the way you want it. But, you know, they, they never uh, quit fighting, as we could see from the turnover on defense and then capitalizing now on offense. Yeah, no quit here from the Spartans. The most points they've scored this season. With the extra point pending, 45 seconds to go. 
And they're going to fake it. Throws it. Two-point conversion. Oh, he had him. And bounces off of his gloves and incomplete. 45 seconds to go. Defiance leads Manchester 51-27. to You're watching the ACAC.TV, powered by Indian SRN. Your hauling or moving project has arrived, and College Hunks Hauling Junk and Moving has you covered. Honest. Uniform. Nice. Knowledgeable. Service. College Hunks Hauling Junk and Moving. Can't get to a computer? Then we've got you covered. Just go to the Indiana SRN app and stay up to date with all of your favorite teams. You can watch live coverage or relive the experience with our on-demand service. We are back here from Manchester College, excuse me, Manchester University. 45 and a half seconds to go. Defiance, 51-27, the lead there. But, Peyton, you got to like what Manchester did there. They got the ball, short field, turned it into six points uh, to, to, to walk off the field on a, on, a, on a positive note despite the result. Yeah, I love it. And like we were talking, obviously, before break, the, they just they didn't stop quitting. And it's so easy as a team, you know, to get really down when you go down big when you were up almost big you know uh, had a lot of momentum on your side but to choosing not to quit and to keep fighting to finish strong i think will uh, pay them dividends um um down the line this ball will bounce into the end zone and manchester with the touchback defiance offense will come onto the field assuming for two kneel downs and that'll do it for this one on senior day, Manchester with a really good first half. They led 21 to 17 at halftime. They led by as many as 11 in that first half. But too many interceptions, too much to overcome. And then in that third quarter, 28 unanswered. Defiance really got rolling on the offensive side of the football to put this one away. You know, I think they would just take a knee now, maybe. And they'll simply hand it off. And with 41 seconds to go, that should just about do it. See if they need to get one more playoff. Peyton Brown, great job. Great to be working with you. Greg Smith, awesome to be working with you. Great job. Justin Griffiths for everybody. Jerry Collins, Keith Myers, everybody involved in today's contest. We want to thank everybody from Manchester University and the HCAC Conference. Don't forget to check out their website, Heartland Conference, the heartlandconf.org. That's H-E-A-R-T-L-A-N-D-C-O-N-F dot org. And that will do it from Manchester. Your final score tonight, the Defiance Yellow Jackets with a 51-27 victory. You've been watching the HCAC.TV, powered by Indiana SRN. <laughs>